So that's that's the best I can tell you from a time. She originally came forward and and spoke to investigators on her own volition. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm really trying to help you guys. I just I need you guys to help me too. Like, yes, ma'am. This is a team, but just don't. <laughs> so let me the, sound, the reason I, why um, we can't like I do I think. Uh, Prior to the time, unfortunately, that she came in and spoke with investigators, she had deleted all of the information off of her phone that had any connection between her and Chris Watts. That hampered the investigation. You know, they're going to say, oh, you know, the woman that had an affair with this man who took out his whole family. And I take a step back and it's just like, I didn't know. Like, I, I, uh, it's... Um, that hampered our ability to get that electronic digital um, connection between the two. Why? 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 How? She was interviewed on multiple occasions. I believe that for the most part, she was forthcoming in the course of those investigations. We don't have any reason to believe that she had any prior knowledge or involvement in the death of Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Nico. Um, I think that's the best way I can answer that. Yes, sir. I still cannot believe this is a happening. I still cannot believe this is a happening. So, okay. his wife gets home sometime at about two o'clock on um that morning so no she got home on sunday pardon me she sunday got sun she got home on sunday so did you ever talk to him late on sunday night no we were on the phone but i mean i i had to let him go and get up and go to work that was so the 9 to 11 call that we it was like a two-hour phone call we talked about yesterday on sunday night from 9 p.m to 11. And that would have been the last time that I talked to him until the work day. What's the meat of this let's, whole situation? Let's get to the phone call on Saturday from 9 to 11. Uh, what did you guys, or pardon me, on Sunday from 9 to 11? Yeah, we talked a few times. So, okay. Sunday, I think so. I need to think. I can't even think. Take a couple breaths and take a, take a second. I mean, I... I don't even know. I don't think I was like concerned about anything at that point. You guys had had a meal, a nice meal the night before. You know, his wife was probably coming home late that evening. Oh, um, you know what? <clears throat> I still don't remember what we talked about. I like honestly, like we talked about so much random stuff. Like it's so hard to pinpoint some of these things. Um, 
I don't remember what we talked about. I do remember that was a long phone conversation. We probably talked about all sorts of stuff. Um, one thing I do remember, though, um, that I didn't remember earlier when I was talking to Mark. So this is, like, where I'm starting to remember, like, little bits and pieces. Mm-hmm. I, I don't That's remember. Weird. Yeah, I know. So the phone conversation... I don't remember what was in the phone conversation. Probably nothing of relevance, to be honest with you. But um, usually he talks to me when he's, like, down in the basement in his bed before he goes to bed and before I go to bed. And I could hear the TV on, which I thought was kind of weird. I didn't ask him. I just heard it in the background. And I remember thinking, and it was, like, right before we got off the phone, I was like, why the hell is he up? And there's, like, no TV downstairs, so it was like, well, maybe, so I don't no know. no TV in the basement where he usually calls you from? Yeah, and I don't know how many TVs they have. Like, I've never been in their bedroom. So, I just wanted to say good morning. I'm in the middle of getting ready. Um, Bella woke up. Come here.
Oh, oh my God. I'm so sorry. What the heck? What the heck? That was like so crazy. I don't even know what happened. I am so super sorry. All right. So enough with that intro. God, I'm so frustrated. Okay. I was just like having a panic attack. Okay. Everyone is, we're all good. Everybody. Thank you, moderators. You are the bomb. Okay. Okay. You can stop messaging me now. <laughs> Thank you, though. I appreciate it. So welcome or welcome back to Watch the Obsession with some technical glitches to begin. So hopefully that means the rest of the stream is going to go totally smoothly. So how's everybody doing tonight? Welcome. I'm so glad that you guys are here. And I see a lot of awesome people in chat. And thank you so very much. So um, I'm not going to say hi to everybody because, you know, enough time has already passed. And I'm so glad that all of you are here. Let me just check out a couple things. And thank you, moderators, for being here. Kelly, we can't see or hear you. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you for trying so hard. Get me back on board. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So tonight we are going to go over um, the August 17th interview with Nicole Kessinger and Kevin Kobach. Now, that particular interview was held over the telephone. So I released a video today that went over some um, text messages between Nicole Kessinger and Kevin Kobach. Did I say Koberger again? I said that one time in the video. Honey Bun caught it right away. Koberger, Kessinger, Kobach, you know, all shady people. Um, so Kobach and also that series of text messages, and there's a lot of them, include several text messages that Nicole Kessinger sent a screenshot of between her and Chris Watts to Kevin Kobach. I almost said Koberger again. Just one second. I got to change this light. Okay. And um, those text messages really filled in kind of the space between the five interviews in total that Nicole Kessinger did with law enforcement. So when you put it all together, I think it paints a really interesting picture, first of all, of Nicole Kessinger, of the interaction between herself and law enforcement, it gives us an idea of law enforcement's attitude in the whole investigation into the murders of Sweet Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and unborn baby Nico. And it gives us an idea of their attitude about Nicole Kessinger herself. My hood. My hood was like half up. Um, <laughs> and it gives us major insight into Nicole Kessinger, the empanada, the taquito, the dirty, skanky, whatever Mexican food you want to call it. Because remember, Chris Watts called her his sexy empanada. And that's actually in the text messages that Nicole Kessinger screenshot and sent to Kevin Koberger. We saw her actually do that. Last week, we watched the interview between Kobach and Kessinger from August 23rd we're kind of going backwards a little bit because that was the very last one that was recorded and at the very end she's like oh do you want me to email them you those or screenshot them to you and you know I'm thinking my god Kobach like don't just take a word for it freaking get like the hard copy of it right we all know that it's so incredibly weird the way that Nicole Kessinger was treated by law enforcement it was just very 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 strange so I'm going to bring uh, just a couple things here into the stream. And then we're going to listen to, oh, that interview from the 17th. Now, the interesting thing about both interviews, there was one from the 17th of August. There was one from the 21st of August. Next week at some point, we're going to listen to the one from the 21st. And, oh, I've been practicing how to say it. Zawoki, yes. Are you here, Zawoki? I think you were in chat earlier. We um, have been talking about we're going to collaborate and do a live stream, I think, on this channel next week and then perhaps on his channel as a continuation the week after and i have like a really cool idea for us to collaborate based kind of on like what both of our channels do that i think will be really awesome for you guys okay so look forward to that i'm excited about it too um so then the, the two telephone interviews from the 17th and the 21st were both partially what i believe is absolutely redacted now, how it comes out, you know, if you're just trying to hear the interview or access that material is you're listening to the interview, you're listening, you're listening, you're listening. You're like, oh, my God, can't believe she said that. Can't believe he said that. Can't believe they're interacting this way. This is so freaking weird. Why is she a witness and not a suspect? My God. Right. We're thinking all those things. 
And then all of a sudden, at some point, the interview, the audio just cuts off. And you're like, wait, 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 wait. I really I wanted to know what was said. That's how I feel, at least. So finding the manuscript or transcript form of the remainder of both of those telephone interviews was not really an easy task, but I did find both of them. So today we will listen to what is available of the audio from that interview on the 17th, which is the one where she says, you know, we can do this as a team. Just don't fucking let me down. And Kevin Co back <laughs> gets all flustered when she says that. Great. Um, we can do that as a team. Who says that to law enforcement? Like seriously. Um, and then when the audio cuts out, I have the visual transcript and then I read it for us so we can get the whole interview. And in both of the telephone interviews that are redacted, what is said after the point where the audio cuts off is just absolutely insane. And I believe that it was not meant for the public to hear because they did that a lot in this case, didn't they? Pretty wild. Okay, so... Um, yeah. Okay. So if you did watch the video that dropped today, it's a 50 minute video. I'm going to play just a little five minute portion and then another four minute portion at some point. So we're not going to watch the whole video again. No worries about that. Um, but I just want you to get this information. We can all get on the same page. Hope everyone's doing really great tonight. Oh, guys, I know we had a rough start, but if you haven't, please go click like. You know, it helps out the video. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. You guys are amazing. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much. I love you. Thanks for coming back. If you're a member, love you. Thanks for coming back. And if you're not subscribed yet, we want you to come back. So click subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications when we do live streams as a community or when I put out a video. So the center of his universe is she's always and make exceptions and concessions. Here's this point I need to get into. We definitely need okay. to okay. are Whoop. just not okay. Let me bring that into the stream. Oh, I did bring that into the stream. All right. Make sure my volume controls are no. Do you see that in Nicole Kessinger through? You do. Situation. This is such a yeah. sessions and to do. I just want to get to where dad's talking. Do things for them that are just not normally socially acceptable. Do you see that in Nicole oh, no. Kessinger Come throughout on. her interviews as it even. pertains to this case? What the heck? Yeah. I oh my gosh. Okay, I just can't even. I'm so sorry. I don't even know what's going on, man. I don't know if it's me or the Watts case or what it is, but it's something. I'm so sorry about that. All right, here we go. I'm with you. We definitely need to accelerate the case because the more law, the more it takes, the less sure that they are of situation. This is such a wild case and so unconventional in so many ways. We all have asked the question, why in God's name is Nicole Kessinger, age 30? Why is her? Wait a minute. Hold it. Well, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. It's crazy. Oh, my gosh. Okay. All right. Let me go back. I'm in the mountains with limited service. Huh? Your phone may me. Here we go. All right. Starting over again. Fresh.
we definitely need to accelerate the case because the more law, the more it takes, the less sure that they are of situation. This is such a wild case and so unconventional in so many ways. We all have asked the question, why in God's name is Nicole Kessinger age 30? Why is her father in the interview room with her? Why is he speaking up? And what the heck is he talking about? They're, so they're going to be less sure of situations. What exactly are those situations, Mr. Kessinger? He murdered her. She's out of the picture. You're never going to know if she was pregnant. If he can get away with murder, you're not going to. I got divorced from my wife. You say, do you understand what I'm saying here? If if she's gone, but this don't leave hypothetically, please. Don't hypothetically, if she, okay. you understand where I'm going. If uh, you, you didn't you're, know, you're leading into questions that are nothing with your. If you didn't know, though, wait, Nick, that she was there. Did you hear what I said? I'm not. I'm following you. In this interview, we definitely see Mr. Kessinger calling all the shots, or at least many of the shots, and. It is not lost on anybody who's watched these interviews that it is so bizarre. I mean, guys, we all know that it's so crazy when he's like, wait, stop, Nick. He's talking to Nick. Her name is Nikki or Nicole. People ask questions about that for a while. They're like, who's Nick? It's, it's his daughter. And, you know, Kobeck keeps talking. He says, well, did you hear what I say? I mean, I, that just blows me away every single time I hear it. I just, I just can't believe it. And Zawoki, thank you so much for gifting 10 memberships. That is so awesome. Everybody turn on your, I can receive the gift option. That's so awesome. And 10 more memberships. Thank you. That is so super generous of you. And again, if you guys didn't hear me before, as long as we're not interfering with your long weekend next week, um, Zawoki, because I just read your email. If it next Friday isn't good for you, we can pick another day. Um, we're going to collaborate. So I think he'll be here on this channel. And then possibly I'll go over there and um, we have a really cool idea for you guys. So I think you'll really love that. So thank you so much. That's super generous of you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And everybody, if you don't know Zawoki, his channel is great. Um, Y'all told me about it. It took me a while to, you know, sit down and actually watch it. But in the past few days, I watched a lot of his videos and I just think they're awesome. So yeah, good stuff. He's right on the same page as we are on this channel, seeking justice, complete justice for the victims, for Shanann, Bella, Cece and Nico, because I know in my heart of hearts that we have not found complete justice for them yet. And I want complete justice for them as you probably do, because that's what they deserve. And I want complete justice for them because that's what we all need to demand in our society. If we want to have the privilege and liberty and necessity of justice, if ever, God forbid, it's our turn or not God forbid, people make mistakes in life. If we need justice, we want it to be there. And if we don't stand up for it, who will, right? So it's really important, guys. Oh, one more. Can, we just want to make sure uh, there's resolution. Absolutely. That's why we come to you guys to yeah. pound, this, and pound it down hey, until I, there's I'm nothing I'm sorry left. that you're talking again today. I really am. I don't want to put you through any more trauma than you've already been through. Little did Kobeck know that there was a lot more trauma that they were both going to go through to come. Nicole Kessinger did a total of five interviews with law enforcement. So I mapped them out along with some other significant events that happened in August of 2018 here on this calendar. So it was on August 15th, 2018, when Nicole Kessinger held the interview with FBI in the park with her daddy and her doggy. On that afternoon, same then on the 16th, the interview that we just saw some clips from where they're sitting at the round table with Kobeck, Nicole Kessinger, and Daddy Dwayne. That was on the 16th. That interview lasted over three hours and many, many topics were covered, except for the ones she didn't want to cover, like the 111 minute phone conversation, which happened, as you can see here on this calendar, on the eve of the murders. November 12th, now that's 2000, I'm sorry, uh, August 12th. Now that's the video that I was trying to play in the beginning with my technical glitches, where in different interviews, Nicole Kessinger really says very little, but also a lot about the 111 minute phone conversation. And what she says is totally conflicting. And that was a whole punchline of that video. I don't know how far I got into it before 
everything decided to just go to heck. Oh my gosh, what is going on? Why is this happening? <laughs> Dude, this is like the worst. I am so sorry. I have no idea what's happening. And oh man, I know I'm going to hear about it from some of you. And I just apologize. This has never happened before like this. I have no idea what's up. I am so sorry. But we're going to just keep marching on. All right. Oops. Get that back in there. Okay. So this calendar here, yeah, you can see that. I just made so you can visually see kind of what was going on. We see on the 8th of August. That's when the Watts came home from North Carolina. Now, it's very interesting to note that on that same day was the day when Nicole Kessinger Google searched viewing wedding dresses for over two hours. Interesting, right? So also on the calendar, we see that on Friday, Shanann went to Arizona. On Saturday, Chris and Nicole Kessinger and maybe some other people had their date at the Lazy Dog, right? The girls had the babysitter. Um, on Sunday, there's the 111-minute phone conversation. Now, guys, I said this many times before, and, and listen if you haven't heard me talk about this yet, because this is really crazy. If we are to look at the official case discovery, a couple interesting things, okay? The first item on the official discovery timeline, the very first item is Nicole Kessinger searching Shanann Watts on September 1st of 2017, which we all know is about 10 months before Chris and Nicole even claimed that they started dating, right? And the very last, the very last item on the official discovery timeline for the murders of Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Nico is Nicole Kessinger searching information about Amber Fry's net worth. Do people hate Amber Fry? And can police tell or can police recover deleted text messages? What's the difference between text message content versus text message details? So she is a capstone for the entire discovery timeline. And y'all have seen it. It's a very lengthy timeline. I mean, we all know that the discovery is nine I'm sorry. Yeah, 1,960 pages. And when we get to the timeline, it's extremely lengthy. It's one of the more lengthy timelines I have seen in any case. And Nicole Kessinger and her actions, specifically her actions with Google, are the capstone for the entire timeline. Now, think about that. There, that fact alone, I mean, do you agree, necessarily means that she is significant in the discovery for this case. And what is this case? This case is the murder of Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Nico. It's no accident, right? <sighs> Let's see. Wilson man. Yeah, I gifted 10 memberships, but Zawoki gifted 30. Thank you so much. It's so super kind of you. I really appreciate it. You're good. You're a good egg. You're a good one. We like Zawoki. Um, I can hear you and see the calendar. Oh, you can? That's good. <laughs> That's a good thing. Oh, hi, DC. I miss you. I haven't seen you in a while. Okay, so now going back to the 111-minute phone conversation and the timeline, Nicole Kessinger appears all throughout that timeline in the discovery, like all the time. I'm going to bring it up right here. Hopefully, this isn't going to cause any more technical difficulties, but they're all over now. Done. Um, again, she's the first item. She's the last item. She appears all throughout the timeline in the discovery. You know when she doesn't appear? On the Sunday before the murders? when they had the 111 minute phone conversation, she doesn't appear in the timeline on that day. There's no mention in the timeline of 
that 111 minute phone conversation. And she also does not appear in the discovery on the day of the murders, the day when her phone pinged in Frederick, Colorado, by my scientific technical calculations with experts in the field within 400 yards. And I say this with absolute certainty of 2825 Saratoga Trail. I made a video about it. I don't want to explain it all now, but if you want to understand how we arrived at that absolute certainty that she was 400 yards or less proximity to the house, you can check out that video and it explains it in detail. And I dare anybody to refute it because it's irrefutable. Um, it just is. God, there's so many. Let me just, I got to show you this here. I don't know where to start, man. Where's August? Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is wild. Okay. So August 12th is that Sunday when they have the 111 minute phone conversation. Let me bring this into the stream. Welcome to everybody who's here. Come on in, get comfortable. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being patient with these technical difficulties. I feel really terrible, but I'm so glad you guys are all here. I appreciate all of you. All right, so here we have, make sure you guys can see it. Make it bigger though, cause yeah. Okay, and get rid of it. Okay, so here it is. It's still not as big as I want it to be, but that's okay. All right, so here we see in bold here, August 12th, 2018. So we go through the whole day. Now look how, look how many items, how many entries there are just for the timeline for this day. So we've got this page. Here's ends the page. Okay, we've got the whole next page. Da, 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 da. Addie, Shanann talking, Shanann, you know, talking to her friends. There's a lot of that here. Shanann asks Watts, can you do me a favor today? If you have time, can you get the girls' backpacks ready for tomorrow with, with blankies and spare clothes, please? If not, I can do it in the AM because Bella's first day of kindergarten. Oh, Bella was supposed to be on the day that she died. Oh my God, guys, how sad is that? Still on Sunday, August 12th, we still have more timeline entries. We're only at 10.32 a.m. There's so many entries for that day. The last pictures of Bella and Celeste, those little beauties. It says, roughly 18 hours before the murders, Watts took one of the last known images of Celeste in life. He sent this and one of Bella taking the same time to Shanann. Man, so sad. Okay, now still we're on August 12th, Sunday, August 12th. Look at all these entries. Every single freaking thing that happened is on here. Here, Watts called Sandy Rusick and they held a 12 minute conversation. We're talking about um, Cody Roberts. Well, that's when he told his coworkers that he was going to be out to serve 319 on Monday morning. Interesting, right? Um, more about Shanann, more about the girls, more pictures. We're still on Sunday, August 12th. See how many entries there are. Okay. Now we are eight, when would that be? Nine 13. Okay. In the evening, lots more entries. Okay. So now get this nine 29 PM. See the first entry. Shanann made an unanswered call to what? That was 10 minutes into the 111 minute phone conversation that started at nine. No, I'm sorry. Sorry, 928. It was a minute into it. 928 to 1118. Right? I think so. Um, it was like right in the beginning of that conversation. And then um, Shanann again uh, tried to contact Watts and said, tried calling you to give you an update. We start to board. They announced that our crew isn't here yet. And it's going to be a minimum of an hour before they are here. So this is Shanann's plane being infamously late. I don't even think he knew that, though, till he was done with the 111-minute phone conversation. So then a minute later, she gives him the flight information. That's at 945. And then at 1021, um, I'm sorry, it would be 1121 because he just got off the call with Kessinger two minutes ago. Chris Watts finally replies, holy crap, sorry, I passed out on the couch. Um, that's going to be late, right? 
but right in here is where we would see the 111 minute phone conversation and there is no mention of that. I think that is absolutely critical. That's why I spent so much time pointing it out. What do you guys think? Awesome. Thanks for being here, Zawoki. I'm so proud. Can you pronounce the name right too? Um, I really appreciate it. And thank you for gifting all the memberships. Thank you so much for stopping by. All right. Okay. After that, the following day, on August 17, 2018, there was a one and a half hour phone conversation between Kovac and Kessinger. We are going to go over this in the next live stream. I've referred to it as a lost interview because mm -hmm. this phone interview, as well as the next phone interview, which was on August 20. I already told you this. I'm going to go forward a little bit. Don't you dare cut out on me. On August 20. 3rd, 2018. Oh my. After that point, she is handed over to Dave Baumhover and Kobach is like, see you later, splitting out of the picture. We can only speculate as to why that is. People have some theories. I've had some theories, but that is how that is. Now, when she does get handed to Dave Baumhover, she writes law enforcement, an eight page bullet pointed shorthand letter, so to speak, going over the entire relationship between her and Chris Watts as that may spark their interest. And when you read that eight page letter and you hear the contents of all of the recorded interviews and you read the text message between Nicole Kessinger and Kevin Kobach that we're going to get into in just a couple minutes here, it is very clear to see that Nicole Kessinger is on a gigantic cover my ass mission. Why is that? As Kevin Kobach stated in the second interview that she had with law enforcement on August 16th, you know, I really hate for you to have to come back in here. Don't want to cause you any more trauma than you're already experiencing. This is not the kind of thing we like to do twice. Well, Nicole Kessinger is like, sign me up, baby. I'm going to do it five, six, seven times more. And you can interview me all day long. There is a reason for that. Right? Yeah. She's trying to cover her ass as she's thinking about things that she did, thinking about things that she said, thinking about things that she now knows they are going to know because she's finding out what they do know and what they can know. She's pooping her pants. I mean, there's like, that's all that there is to it. It's so very clear. Oh my goodness. Um, let's see. So I just want to look at the text leading up to this interview we're going to listen to and then we'll listen to it. Shannon and Bella. Whoop, here. She wants to provide and address a couple other issues that were not addressed. Oh, here, here's the beat. Well, here's the beginning of the interview, but here. So the phone call will be to. Hold on. Okay, these are the texts right before the interview. Then I put a little piece of the interview in that video for you, so you know what's going on. Sandra, Sandra, no, took off. Okay, these are the texts on the seventeenth before the interview we're about to listen to in about three minutes actually went down. Okay. And call back. My dad is coming to get me. I'll meet you there. That's from the 16th. Now we go to Friday, August 17th. I remembered more stuff. So that's the day after her first interview with Kobach. Then Kobach says, okay, did you sleep? Kessinger, more than I have lately, probably about five hours. Kobach, good. Are you working today? Kessinger, no, took off today. Not really sure how to deal with my coworkers. So I think maybe it'd be good to try to set up a meeting with E. -A. <coughs> and my bosses from both companies and give them a brief background of what is occurring and ask them for help with this. Was hoping maybe I could refer them to you if they had questions. Kobach, sure. I will help any way I can. I would like to talk to you about what you remember. Can I call you at about nine when I get to my office? Kessinger, yes, I want to get this all wrapped up pretty soon. 
Now, that was her initial message that was to him at like 2 a.m. And he responded to her at 6.37 a.m. By the way, Kobach, okay, I will call you as soon as I get to my office. Thanks for contacting me, Kessinger. Okay, Friday, August 17th, 9.34 a.m. Kessinger, I am ready when you are. Kobach says, I'm in a meeting and will call you soon. Kessinger, okay. Kobach says, sorry, still stuck, he stuck here. Give it a few more. Kessinger, okay. Kobach, few more minutes. Sorry. Kessinger impatiently says, is it possible to find out if my name is in the sealed affidavit thing that is to be open next week? Would like to contact my employer about the media thing and trying to be a proactive with work. And it would be nice if I could give them a heads up about when things might take place. And then she sends another message after that saying, what time are you available? Kobach says, just wrapping uh, up the Metro and I'll call you soon. Okay, so at this time, Kevin Kobach gives Nicole Kessinger a call as she's been anxious to receive from him. And I'm just going to play you the beginning of that recording where he says the date and the time and what it is he is doing. So here it is. Today is August 17th, 2018. The time is 10.51 a.m. This is Agent Kevin Kobach from CBI making a phone call to witness in the Watts matter. Nicole Lee Kessinger at 720-656-9605. Nicole uh, texted me last night and said that she recalled some further information after an interview with her on the 16th. So the phone call will be to update whatever information she wants to provide and address a couple other issues that were not addressed during the initial interview. So that phone call has happened and in the live stream tomorrow night, Friday evening, February 16th, we are going to go over that interview that was partially redacted. Um, it's a long one and it's a good one. So now this conversation between Kessinger and Kobach via text message continues on that same day, August 17th, 2018. Kobach then says, Nikki, call me about the victim advocate. So now this is right after the the um, interview that's partially redacted that we are going to listen to the whole thing in just a little bit. And I bet a lot of you have not heard the whole thing. <clears throat> I just, I don't even know. I mean, I found it on one other channel. Maybe it was CBT a while ago. And I couldn't, I haven't been able to find it anywhere else because it was not easy to find those transcripts. It was not. It. Hazel Heckers is her name. Phone will show on her caller ID is a certain number, but her direct number is a different number. Friday, August 17th, 2.59 p.m. Kessinger says, can I ask, how were you able to acquire my text between Charlotte and I? <laughs> Kobach responds by saying, we have all your texts for the past seven days. Okay, so listen. On the 17th, this is what? So we're now four days after the murders. Her first interview was with the FBI on the 15th. The one that is the video with all the good quotes was on the 16th with Kobach. And now this is a the phone interview on the 17th, dot, 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 three days in a row. Now she asks, how'd you get my emails with Charlotte or my text messages with Charlotte? And he says, oh, we have all your shit for the past seven days. So they have had the her messages for the past seven days since the afternoon of the 15th. So I want you guys to remember that the next time you are listening to that interview on the 16th, the one where her dad's there, where they're at the round table, they have already every single one of her text messages for the past seven days. Knowing that she has a different light on almost everything that is said. And I totally forgot about that. We're going to have to consider that all together sometime soon. Now, this is an important point here because I think this also bolsters what I believe to be true, that the only conversation that Kessinger had with her bestie, Charlotte, about Chris Watts was on August 8th, 2018, the day before Shanann, Bella Celeste, and baby Nico were murdered. Isn't that strange? They had been dating for six weeks, according to them, and she doesn't message, mention to her best friend about her new love interest until the day before the murder of his family, very, very strange indeed. Okay, now I want you guys to absorb that too. 
I'm bringing out a lot of points here since I've been diving back deep into this case again, which is, I think, why all these technical difficulties and weird things are happening for me because it happens every freaking time without fail. Um, Charlotte Nelson, her best friend, the text messages that, okay, the only text messages that we see between Kessinger and her best friend, Charlotte Nelson, are from Sunday, August 12th. The same day that the 111 minute phone conversation happened, the eve of the murders of Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Baby Nico, just hours before their lives ended. Okay. Now, some people have contested that point with me. Oh, well, we only see those messages from the 12th, but they had talked about Chris before. Uh uh uh. Not. So now Kevin Kobach did mess up the date in the discovery and said it was August 7th, but that's just because he's a slob. Um, let's take a look at Galbraith's, you know, tightly written um, report. So let me just get to where their actual messages are. And I'm going to prove to you that that's the first time they talked about Chris Watts. Because I've gotten a lot of pushback on that and I'm going to push back. Because, the, I mean, the proof is here. Let's see. Oh. So you have to get the actual text messages. Let's see. All right. Just one moment, please. i got to find this in the discovery. Where we are. Where are we going? Let me see. So, yeah. And, guys, I have, in the past several videos I've done or live streams, we've touched on this issue of, what was said to Charlotte Nelson and the, the, the big deal that law enforcement made about it, because it is a really big deal. Um, and I just want you to pay close attention because this is all culminating towards something that I realized as I have been diving back deep into this case. And I think it is absolutely freaking mind blowingly significant. Um, and myself and a couple other people who are, well, two attorneys and a couple YouTube creators are all putting this into a document to write up a formal document to send to law enforcement. Us junior detectives, Rourke, we love you, Rourke. Edward said, I lie awake at night wanting to know if Rourke is subscribed to Kelly's channel. I want to know that too, seriously. Oh my God. Sorry, I'm still looking for these text messages. Sorry. Where do they actually appear here in discovery? So, hey guys, if you're just getting in here, welcome. Come on in. We still have <clears throat> a lot to go over. It is um, every Friday night we do a live stream. Recently, it's been about the Watts case, which is great. Um, I love talking to you guys about all this again. There's been a lot of interest. And honestly, I think it's, you know, has to do with some channels like, you know, Zawoki, who was just here, whose channel I absolutely love. I know you guys have been telling me about him for a long time, and it took me a long time to actually check out his channel. But when I did, I really love it. He's, um, he's just, I, I like him. I like his personality. He does really good stuff. And he's going to be on this channel next Friday night. We're going to collaborate and do a live stream together. It's going to be pretty awesome, actually. I'm excited about it. Um, let's see. All right. Come on, Charlotte Nelson. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, he's getting close. See that? Let's see. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to keep playing this while I'm trying to find this. Okay. Thank you for the info. Why did I sign that paperwork if you guys already had the information? Not upset by any means, just confused. Do you guys get all my text messages going forward as well? Kobach says, again, the phone could contain other texts that were not captured by the cell phone company. No, we do not get your texts. Kessinger then says, understood. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Quebec says, you too. Okay. So, I found him. Okay. So now, on Saturday, August 18th, at 3.45 p.m. We don't need to go there. We don't need to go there. Okay. Hold it. Do, 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 do. Oh my, okay. All right. So again, we're talking about the issue of the fact that Nicole Kessinger did not tell her best friend, Charlotte Nelson, about Chris Watts until Sunday, August 12th, the day 
before the murders, the eve of the murders, literally hours before the murders, just a couple hours before the 111 minute phone conversation. I mean, how critical is this day? But none of this appears in the official discovery timeline. I mean, how about that, guys? Seriously, it, it paints a very clear picture when you put all of this together. Okay, so now we have Stacey Galbraith's report <clears throat> on what was said by Charlotte Nelson. Oh, between Charlotte Nelson and Nicole Kessinger. Okay, whoopsie. All right, so um, the texting is on um, August 12th, 2018. I'm not certain of the time zone in which the records are formatted. Some of the content is undecipherable just like the cool, never mind. Um, based upon the numbers, it is difficult to say for sure if the texts are from Nikki or Charlotte, but the contact lends to context and the author, okay? So Nikki says, been kind of hanging out with a guy recently, keeping it a secret. Dude loves to eat P word. Never met a man who does till now. I just let it happen, LOL. Sorry for the graphic disgusting when you're thinking about her saying it, content. But she says here, been kind of hanging out with a guy recently. Does that sound like she's referring to somebody that she's seeing that they have talked about before? I don't think so. Oh, I didn't even share that with you yet. There you go. <laughs> so again, the very first thing that is said, been kind of hanging out with a guy recently, keeping it a secret, do blah, 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 blah. She just lets it happen. And then Charlotte said, where did you meet this man? And then Kessinger says, I don't know, man. Sean never did what she was just talking about. Charlotte says, I don't think it's you. Some guys are lame like that, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, the, the important thing is the opening two lines here. Nicole Kessinger saying, been kind of hanging out with a guy recently, keeping it a secret. And then Charlotte says, where did you meet this man? And then she's asking basic details about him throughout this exchange. So to me, it is very clear that this is, the first time that Kessinger told her best friend, Charlotte Nelson, about Chris Watts, right? Do you guys agree with that? I wonder what you think about that. Does that seem clear to you or is that in question for anybody? And thank you guys all for being here. Come on in. If you're in the replay crew, I'm so glad you got this far. Sorry for the rocky um, technical glitch beginning. But it happens. Um, let's see. Yeah, 350 in chat. Everyone, make sure you hit like. And if you aren't subscribed, hit subscribe. We want you to come back. Please do come back. Um, and welcome to all the new members with the 30 memberships. Um, the Wolki, I do always think about saying the name, um, gifted. I gifted 10. Some other, I didn't see any more. And somebody, somebody became members on your own and welcome. Um, that's really awesome because we're doing members only live streams every week. And I have two uploads for you next week. I just finished. Um, I think I'll upload them on, on Sunday and Tuesday. So be looking forward to that. Members, there's so many of you now. It's amazing. I love it. Um, uh, hey, Double. That's so funny, Double R. I didn't even see you yet. And I was just thinking about wonder if Double R is here. And then I saw you. We're psychically connected. Scary. Um. So Wookie is a good man, yeah. Oh, you had to pay for it. You're so upset. Oh, well, thank you for being a member. I really appreciate it. Thank you for supporting the channel. I think the memberships, the gifted memberships only last for a month too, just so you know, right? Is that right, guys? So if you are gifted a membership here on any other channel, it just lasts for the month. So if you want to renew it the following month, you have to renew it yourself. Is that right, guys? Um, yeah. Yeah, I like Friday Night Lives too. All right, so let's just get in it with stuck on twenty four. Oh, hey Kestick, how are you? So nice to see you, my darling. I miss well, I haven't seen you in a while, but it's great to see you anyway. Um, oh, <laughs> just joking. Okay. If NK got sick from Invisible Jim, I love Jim comments, sorry. I'm a sucker for him every time. If you want to get my attention, talk about, leave Jim alone, leave Jim alone. 
Jim doesn't have to get into this. Leave Jim alone. Mm. If NK got sick from Invisible Jim, how was she already sick Monday morning? That's a good question. That's right. Yeah, so much of what she says just doesn't make sense because she'd be lying. She's lying. And he. Oh. oh, no, the flowers aren't fresh. No. But I put the arrangement together of not fresh flowers. <laughs> I wish they were fresh. That'd be cool, right? I know. Kelly Girl says, hi, Kelly Girl, by the way. How are you? Nice to see you. Kelly Girl says, in what reality would law enforcement actually leave Jim alone? I know. I know. Man. And the way she responds, I mean, I just want to show it to you right now, but we've gone over it so many times. Her body language and everything and the way she recoils and shields herself. And I mean, she is just, there is something there. The idea of them talking to Jim is something that she needs to protect so strongly, obviously. But even if it weren't for the exclamations, her body language says that absolutely 100%. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, be here next Friday night because he's going to be on the channel. And I have an idea. I haven't pitched it to him yet. But he's definitely coming on. And I'm sure he'll like it. Um, and I think you guys are going to like it. I came up with it with you guys in mind. All right. So let me bring that interview into the stream and we're going to listen to it. So this is the August 17th phone interview between Nicole Kessinger and Kevin Kobach. So it is sandwiched right in the middle. It is number three of the five recorded interviews between Nicole Kessinger and law enforcement. And this, like the other phone interview, is redacted halfway through. The audio cuts out, but da, 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 da. I am obsessed. So I shoveled and shoveled and shoveled and dug up the transcript for the second portion of the interview. So we are going to all get to find out what was said right now. There it is. Welcome or welcome back to Watts, The Obsession. This is the second of the phone interview with Chris Watts, former Mr. 17th phone interview. In the public is only provided a certain portion of the audio. What I said there was just wrong, actually. I'm sorry. This is the first of the, I don't know what I said, but anyways. Before anything. that audio cuts off, I'll be reading the transcript for the redacted portion of the August 17th phone interview with Nicole oh, Kessinger. Thank you. The audio seems to cut off right around line 780, okay? Today is August 17th, 2018. The time is 10.51 a.m. This is Agent Kevin Kobach from CBI making a phone call to witness in the Watts matter, Nicole Lee Kessinger at 720-656-9605. Nicole uh, texted me last night and said that she recalled some further information after an interview with her on the 16th. So the phone call will be to update whatever information she wants to provide and address a couple other issues that were not addressed during the initial interview all right i just want to <laughs> hi this is what i have with my chat i just want to i want to pick up this comment or question here so um let's see michael wagner asks do you believe nk knew chris before he moved to colorado so like they knew each other from north carolina so i don't even know who started that idea i hadn't even heard of this saw until very recently and i don't think that there is absolutely any um basis or evidence that lets us know that they probably knew each other before colorado apparently um i think it was during the last live stream somebody was saying and i haven't even checked this out but it was said that um nicole kessinger's grandmother lives within like 45 minutes or something like that of where chris watts is from in north carolina well you know um but other than that i, I personally i don't think so so 
So, but, and it's a good question to ask. Do you think that that's the case? I just, I don't have any reason to believe that's the case. One more try. <laughs> oh, one thing I just want you to listen. And some of you have already picked up on this, I'm sure. Um, to how one thing I really love about this interview is this is the one interview where you can really perceive Kevin Kobach's total frustration. And it, sometimes to me, it even sounds like disgust. With Nicole Kessinger, which I think is the appropriate emotion that he should be feeling, given what is said in this interview. Oh my God, I was listening to it earlier today, taking notes. And I literally started feeling sick. Um, and I'll tell you the points where I was feeling that. She's just, I, she's just a disgusting person. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, Nikki. It's Kevin. Hi. How are you? Sorry. Uh, sorry for the delay. I got stuck in a meeting. Obviously, I uh, couldn't walk out. So I apologize for taking so long to get back to you. That's okay. You at least got a couple hours of sleep last night? Yes. You, you sound a little bit better than yesterday. I feel a little bit better. Not much, but I feel like sitting down and just talking about all of that with everybody is like uh, it's pelvic. good well i think just keep that up and again if you need any if you if i can put you in touch with somebody from a victim advocate to whatever i can help you with just call and ask okay okay um, i'm gonna need you to do that once we're done talking okay sure i can get somebody in touch with you today um and you don't need to tell me about anything. We talked about that yesterday, but. He's like, please don't tell me about anything more with your emotional problems. I've heard enough. It might be something good for you to do and, and I can make that happen today. Thank you. You're welcome. So what you texted me about 2 a.m. and said that you uh, remembered some other information. What did you remember? Like just kind of odds and ends. Um... And I'm sure there will be more as this goes on. I just, I interacted with him so much that sometimes, like, I just have to stop and think about how much information that I have gotten from him over the last few months and the last week or so. And, you know, like I said, I never know what's true and what's not anymore. Sure. I figure I'll just give you guys everything I have. And hopefully I don't have to keep calling you back with more, but no promises. No. That's okay. Please do. I Like I told you yesterday, anything that comes to mind that you think is important, I'd like to know. Because you, again, you know him better than anybody probably over the last six to eight weeks. So that's, that's anything that he said to you or anything that stands out to you as you're reflecting on all this um, kind of mess here is important for me to know. Kind of mess here. I like how he says that. Now, um, let's see. Goldfish Brain 32. Hi, how are you doing, Goldfish Brain? I like that. It says, I heard they went to the same gym. So I just wanted to note that because in the end of this interview and in the redacted portion that I read the transcript of, um, just keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to tell you my whole theory on the gym. And it just all actually came together for me as I've been listening to this interview a few times over the past week. I feel pretty sure about it. I'm not sure about it because I don't have complete evidence to support it, but I'm going to tell you about it. Understood. A um, couple things. So one, I went back and I tried to like find whatever text you were talking about between my friend Charlotte and me with the e-harmony thing, and I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, if you and I, I mean, I text so much though. So like, if you find it and you show it to me, let me know. But it's just like, I mean, I was on that site, but it was never like worth a damn for me. Sure. So it wasn't really something that I ever like discussed with her. However. When I was going back through there, I did realize that I had, like, offhandedly mentioned to her a little bit about Chris. I didn't tell her that I was, like, 
how deep the rabbit hole went on that, I guess you could say, but it was kind of vague, and she was asking a lot of questions at that point, but it was just like, oh, you know what? I did say something to her. You guys, I think um, I just looked at the, the messages, and it, there was some, like, little bit of conversation regarding, yeah, he's got kids. Um, there was some conversations about some sexual-related stuff, and that was about it. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's it. But I mean, I did mention it to her. And honestly, we've talked since then, and I haven't even mentioned him. And that girl's so wrapped up in everything that's going on in her life. Like, I don't even think she realizes what's going on in the news. Okay. I don't even think she's going to connect the dots. Like, I would be <clears throat> surprised. Like, I honestly am convinced that if I don't say a word about it, I bet you she won't even bring him up. Okay. And even if she did, if I was just like, yeah, he's not around anymore in my life, like, I don't even think... I'm not concerned about her. Okay. And the, the only, again, the only concern I had there is there seemed like there was some conversation about a boyfriend. And <clears throat> it doesn't seem like, so you were actually talking to her about Chris, not a boyfriend. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I don't, I like, I went back to those texts, I'm like, what is he talking about? <laughs> I don't see anything about eHarmony. I mean, and if and it's in there, maybe it is, and I just missed it. But okay. it's like, no, I don't know. It, it's I not mean, all that important. Mind. It's not all that okay. important. So we can move past that. What okay. What else? Um, on Monday night, so a couple things. Um, I told you we had been, he had like texted me, and then at the end of the night, we had, he had called, or I had called. I think he called me, but either way, we were on the phone with each other. And like, part of the, at some point when we were on the phone, he was like, he was like, yeah, she texted Kevin Cole back at 2 a.m. to say she remembered stuff she wanted to tell him. I think that's freaking weird. You want to FaceTime, and I remember I was laying in bed, and I was and I was just like, you know what? Okay, let me turn on the light. And I remember I turned on the light, and we FaceTimed. And when we FaceTimed, he didn't really say much. Like it was almost kind of awkward. I don't even know why I didn't think of this earlier, but it was like it was very short too. It was super brief. And like what? What's short? Like, what? What? What is short? Like a couple of minutes or thirty minutes? Oh no! I thought it was only probably like less than five minutes. I think it was only okay. like a couple of minutes. Okay. And he, I think we we were like talking a little bit, but he like he was laying down on a mattress that didn't have any sheets on it, and um. I was like, okay, so I was thinking like, well, maybe he's like, he's in bed, I don't know what's up, but I remember asking him like, where's your sheet, you know, and he's like, he's like, oh, I washed them, and then this is the part, I don't remember if this sentence right here came in this FaceTime conversation, or if it came in a phone conversation prior to the FaceTime conversation. Now, you hear say that, I don't know if this happened in the phone conversation or in a FaceTime conversation prior to the phone conversation. Now I'm just looking at my notes here in just a little bit, Kessinger is gonna tell Colbeck exactly like what, like ex all of the calls and communications they had during that night and there were a lot of them and she knows everything like perfectly. She knows all the details. This, I can't remember things is such a load of BS. It's crystal clear. But regardless, this next sentence came on Monday night, and I'm so sorry that I cannot, like, always remember chronological every little detail. That's of okay. It's understandable. There's so much. Um, but I remember he was saying that he was cleaning the house um, to try to keep busy to take his mind off of things. And this was on the phone. And I didn't. And it was kind of late when he was doing it. And, like, I didn't honestly think that much about it originally because that man is always cleaning. Like, he's a very, very, like, organized, meticulous, clean individual. Like, he's the type of guy that will, like, vacuum his whole house one week. And if there's rooms that don't get used, he'd vacuum again the next week just because it's, like, part of his routine. Okay. So the fact... So the fact that he's, like, cleaning to kill time and take his mind off things did not seem like a super red flag to me. Um, 
because I was like, okay, well, that's what he does. He just, well, like, what I'd be concerned about is why is he cleaning his house and not out looking for his baby girls and his pregnant wife? Like, seriously, that didn't trigger that didn't like cause any red flags for you like why the fuck aren't you looking for your small children and pregnant wife you're cleaning seriously on his days off like he organizes his basement or he like cleans his garage it's just it's what he does <laughs> but this is not a normal day off he was told he couldn't go to work he wanted to go to work and anna jarko said no seriously bro you stay home today and the fact that it doesn't alert her as she says that he was cleaning his house and not looking for his babies and his family and his pregnant wife is so effed up in my opinion. Okay. And um, so anyways, so that didn't seem that uh, oh. like the norm for me, but something that just kind of like dawned on me last night is he made the comment directly after that. He said, I had to wash the kids' sheets. He was like, they smell. And I was like, was thinking about that last night, and I'm like, this man keeps that house so clean. That's like the cleanest house I've ever seen. And I'm like, this man keeps that house so clean. Why would his kids' sheets smell bad? And this, and that, you think this was what, Monday night? What time do you think it was Monday night? Oh God, I don't even know. I almost wish you guys would show me my phone. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, gonna read home. off your phone calls for Monday and Tuesday, starting. No, it's on Monday. Okay. Wait, I just want to read this comment. I'm sorry that I stopped, but this is this is important, and I'm writing this down now because I don't want to forget it. Cash check. Thank you for saying this. After all these years of following this case, my take is that Chris Watts did it, and the bombshell evidence that Nicole Kessinger told law enforcement. Because remember. DA work in his press conference after the sentencing said, and she gave us bombshell evidence, and we are junior detectives, everyone, everyone, junior detectives. She gave us bombshell evidence. Now leave me alone, right? Um, so Kessinger, I'm sorry, Kessinger, Kesschick <laughs> says um, she thinks the bombshell evidence is that NK told law enforcement where the bodies were. Now, I never thought that was the case. I just didn't. I just didn't ring true to me. However, for the very first time, while well, I was listening to this very interview earlier today and taking notes for you guys, I had to re-listen and re-listen and re-listen to this one part, and it's coming up, and I'm going to tell you exactly where it is, and I now am considering that that might be a possibility, and I can't wait to get all of your all, your all opinion on it, um, because I, it, 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 I don't know. There's something that said that changed my mind on that one. It's funny you mentioned that, because chick. Just so Monday night. Monday night, you guys had um, we talked about um, a phone call yesterday, but you guys had a phone call Monday night. It looks like he called you. It was 48 minutes and 57 seconds. It was at 948 p.m. that he called you. Um, okay. So that would take us to about 1035. And then there's another call on Monday. It's for 51 minutes and 25 seconds, it looks like. I'm not sure, looking at this, who called who, but it looks like you called him, and that was at 11.09 p.m. That lasted 51 minutes, so that takes us to um, midnight. And then there's another phone call where he calls you. So we're now into midnight, you know, Tuesday morning. It's a 30-minute phone call um, that lasts until 12.38 a.m., and then after 12.38 a.m., there's a two-minute and 44-second phone call that lasts for, or pardon me, that starts at 1.12 a.m. It's two minutes and 44 seconds. So Yeah, so I would almost, this is just me, but I would go get my text messages with him from that night, and I would, like, sync them up to that, like, time frame because okay. there was texting in between that. So I think what happened is, he called me on that first call. And then there's that gap between the first call and the second call. In in that gap, that was when I FaceTime for a few minutes, and that was when I got up out of bed because I was just having trouble sleeping, and I was like, I went and did laundry. That's what I did. I went like, 
put some clothes, I just put some clothes in the dryer, and then I think I called him back, and then we continued to talk, so that little gap right there between those two big phone calls at the very beginning of the night, yes. I mean, not the very beginning of the night, but the, like, the big, big ones at the, the, the first two, so in between that gap, there's, a, there's like a quick face time. So do you think that okay, two I'm minutes sorry. and 44? This is what I'm talking, which is the diatribe she's going off on right now, explaining how all of their communications kind of panned out that night. This is where I was like, damn, man, this girl is proven to everybody that she knows like all the details. Let me just go back a few seconds and just listen to her rattle this shit off. And then she dares to say, I don't know. I can't remember. It's like too long ago. No, 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 dirty empanada. No, 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 no. You lie, lie phone call where he calls you so we're now into midnight you know tuesday morning it's a 30 minute phone call um that lasts until 12 38 a.m and then after 12 38 a.m there's a two minute and 44 second phone call that lasts for or pardon me that starts at 1 12 a.m it's two minutes and 44 seconds so yeah so i would almost this is just me but i would go get my text messages with him from that night and i would like sync them up to that like time frame because okay. there was text now listen to her texting in between that so i think what happened is he called me on that first call and then there's that gap between the first call and the second call in in that gap that was when I be FaceTime for a few minutes and that was when I got up out of bed because I was just having trouble sleeping and I was like I went and did laundry that's what I did I went like put some clothes I just put some clothes in the dryer and then I think I called him back and then we continued to talk so that little gap right there between those two big phone calls at the very beginning of the night yes. I mean not the very beginning of the night but the like the big big ones at the the, the first two so in between that gap there's a there's like a quick FaceTime so do you think that two minute and 44 second is the FaceTime? The one at the very end? Yeah. Well, so no, there's, there's, there's... I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even think the FaceTime's on there. Okay, the so... the FaceTime occurred in between those two big phone calls. That, okay. like, you know. Okay. Because it was, so it was, like, one big phone call, and then there's, and then there should have been, there's a FaceTime, and then, and, and the FaceTime's short. It's only a few minutes, and then there's probably just a few more minutes. There's... And that's that, probably... So there's a few more calls on Tuesday. So 112 is the two minute and 44 second call. See, she knew all that perfectly. I mean, this is just absolutely crazy. And I forgot to say, I just want to say, um, Margie Singer, if you're still here, I hope you are. Thank you so much for the super chat from a while ago. She said, glad to catch you live and so glad you're here too. And thank you so much. And thanks for supporting the channel and sarcasm for fun. Thank you so much for the super chat as well. Um, or super sticker it is. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much, guys. That So that lasts till um, approximately 114. And then there's a long gap uh, until 150. So another 45 or 35 minutes. And then there's a seven minute phone call. That phone call lasts yeah. till 158 a.m. And then there's a 10 second phone call at 2.07 a.m. followed by, um, so he, I think he calls you and maybe leaves a voicemail or something or doesn't, you don't pick up. Uh, so there's a 10 second call. And then directly after that, there's a 10 minute and 24 second phone call. A lot of calls. Okay. So I'm talking about the two at the very beginning. Of the, the okay, two, the, 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 beginning the two long the really ones. Long one. And is yeah. that when he's talking so, about the kids um, yes, sheets. with the sheet. Okay, so yes, 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 yes. I will help you line this up. Like, I almost want to just come in there and, like, drop and drag all of my texts to where they were going. And it, you know what? Like, of course you do, Dirty Empanada. You want to see everything they have because she, in, in this interview, keep in mind here, guys, in this interview, the interview from August 17th, the ball is dropped on her Empanada head that they have her text messages because when she's talking about, you know, oh yeah, you know, I did, you know, tell Charlotte some things, you know, just thinking she's just kind of saying whatever. And Colbeck is totally like in the dark, which like he kind of, kind of is, but he did have her text messages. I mean, in the dark, like in his head, because I just, I don't know, I'm just not a big fan. Um, 
And he says, oh, yeah, so I went through those text messages and there was just some stuff about, you know, something or other and some sexual content or and she's like, um, yeah, but then it is after this interview, if you want the um, video I uploaded earlier today with all the text messages between Kobach and Kessinger. And if you haven't seen that video, I can almost guarantee that pretty much everybody here watching this video there's going to be something in that video that you haven't seen yet because those text messages were in one rendition of discovery. I think in the December, shortly after the first discovery came out and then they took some stuff back and they put some stuff. I don't know. They just keep messing with us, messing with us, messing with things and messing with our minds. Um, and it was only released for a day or less is my understanding. That was the one that had all those text messages between Nicole Kessinger and Kevin Kobach. That's what the video is about that I uploaded earlier today. This is the Watts the Obsession vault opening. There's lots out there. Yeah, okay. I didn't know if there's something else I'd say there. Oh, so then, I'm sorry, in the text messages, in the video, you'll see it's Shortly after this interview, Kessinger says to Kobach, you know, I'm just curious, like, how did you guys get my messages with Charlotte? Like, how did that happen? So she didn't know that they had them. So, you know, uh, this is all catching her by surprise right now. Like, we may meet and do that uh, here coming in early next week. Yeah, well, all those phone calls at the very end of the night, that was me freaking out. Like, if you look at my text, a lot of that was like, I can't sleep, I'm really scared, where's your family? That was like me freaking out and okay. him calling. So she's referring to Monday night now, going into Tuesday morning. Monday night, all of those short little calls that you know about now, now I know you know about, and oh my God, I also know, I just found out a couple minutes ago, that you also have my text messages for the past seven days. She's just trying to figure out, what do I do about this now? Forgetting that she already told law enforcement and she already told the FBI and she told Kevin Kobach previously that for the entirety of Monday, August 13th, the day that those precious souls lost their lives and deserve full justice and all of our attention on getting full justice for them, um, she said that she wasn't concerned. She wasn't worried. She wasn't suspicious of Watts. Nothing he did alerted her. Um, and she wasn't worried until, and she makes a huge point of saying this time and time again, the first time I was concerned was Tuesday. Tuesday comes after Monday. When I was reading the newspaper and I found out that Shanann or his wife or that girl, I don't think she said Shanann yet, um, or when she did, she said, Shanann um, was pregnant. It wasn't until then, when she found out Shanann was pregnant, was she alerted or concerned about anything. Hmm. One of the many critical key contradictions she herself makes to prove that she's a dirty empanada liar, liar, liar face. Liar face empanada to like try to reassure me or me calling him like please talk to me i'm super scared where's your family like those those little ones at the very end of the night are are me not being able to sleep and trying to get him to like talk to me about like and just i guess making sure everything was okay so that those those like real late ones and that's why they're all kind of like sporadic because i'd be up for like an hour and then i'd fall asleep for like 15 minutes and then i would like wake up and start stressing again and try to call him back like so that's why they're all these like little sporadic ones throughout the end of the night that's so weird that she transcended the space-time continuum because she wasn't concerned about anything until later like the next morning hours and hours and hours later when she found out shanann was pregnant so this is all just very weird she has magical dirty empanada powers for sure right, but those two big ones is it, so yesterday we talked about tuesday was mainly text messages regarding um your confrontation about his wife being pregnant yeah is that accurate um it is and i okay. mean i guess i guess now, those phone okay. calls were now you see what he did there kobach is not stupid although i'm not a fan 
he's not stupid. Um, I think sometimes he, you know, is in a position where he can't um, ask the questions he wants to because of the deals that are made. Because she was determined to be a protected witness when the FBI spoke to her before he even got to her. Um, before Chris Watts even made his partial in, um, incorrect false confession. Weird. Um, but he's picking up on the same thing we're picking up on here, right? Wait a minute. You're like freaking out Monday evening. That's what all those little calls are about. But you just told me yesterday, time and time and time again, in that three hour long interview. And he asks this and she reaffirms it and he asks it with different words and she reaffirms it with similar words time and time and time again. She was not concerned about anything concerning Chris Watts until she found out that Shanann was pregnant on Tuesday. Yet she's going on and on and on and on about her freaking out on Monday. And that's what all these calls are about. Because how else do you explain all of those calls? It's a total of, I totaled it up earlier, almost three hours of calls. It's like two and a half or three between that, between Kessinger and Chris Watts, that Monday evening, just the Monday evening, we're talking after like the first long call, which is like at 8 p.m. or something like that. Um, the evening of the murders, just like, come on, man. And she, she, she's like a witness. What? But anyway, so she goes off about all this that she was freaking out Monday night. Now, listen to the question Kobach, Kobach asks her about Tuesday, and you kind of see what he's doing here. Listen. Talk to me about, like, and just, I guess, making sure everything was okay. So that those, those like, real late ones, and that's why they're all kind of, like, sporadic, because I'd be up for, like, an hour, and then I'd fall asleep for, like, 15 minutes, and then I would, like, wake up and start stressing again and try to call him back. Like, so that's why they're all these, like, little sporadic ones throughout the end of the night. But those two big ones... Is it, so yesterday we talked about Tuesday was mainly text messages regarding um, your confrontation about his wife being pregnant. Yeah. Is that accurate? Um, it is. And I okay. mean, I guess. Listen, I, listen, and listen to the disappointment. Just listen to his words here. One. Is it, so. Listen. Yesterday we talked about Tuesday was mainly text messages regarding um, your confrontation about his wife being pregnant. Remember, Tuesday was about you finding out his wife was pregnant. That's when you were alerted in Pinata. Yeah. Is that accurate? Um, it is. And I okay. mean, I guess, I guess okay. those phone calls were on Tuesday morning. But for me, it was still Monday okay. night. I, so I, I was talking to you guys last night. That's right. how I referred to it because I hadn't, like, gone to bed yet. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yep. No, that makes sense. He, if, I think, I, I, I feel like... In his voice, what I hear, and I'm just speculating on this and using a little bit of, you know, like, you know, voice, you know, it's things that I know. For those of you who don't know, I'm a behavioral therapist. So I analyze statements and non verbal and nonverbal stuff all day long, every day. Oh my God. I like it though. It's important. All humans do that, whether that's your job or not. So, um, you know, he's like, okay, okay. I think this is a turning point for him when he hears her talking about Monday evening and those phone calls and she was freaking out. And he's like, wait a minute. I thought Tuesday was all about text. You didn't even talk to him because that's when you found out his wife was pregnant. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay, he's over it. His tone changes now. Listen to this. Listen to how his tone has changed. These are just kind of, you know, this is a subtext in all of this that's going on. To me. Okay. So, okay, so, 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 he, so I guess those technically were on Tuesday, but According to my daily sleep schedule, that was still my Monday night. Right. So the last phone call um, with him on Monday, well, it, it's, it, it basically starts into Tuesday. Um, it takes you all the way to Tuesday. It actually okay. ends like basically at midnight on Monday, August 31st. So okay. um, his wife gets home sometime at about two o'clock on um, that morning. So no, she got home on Sunday. Pardon me, she Sunday. Got on Sunday. She got home. On no, she didn't get home on Sunday. Her plane touched down in the Denver airport, and she tragically, fatefully arrived home at twenty-eight twenty-five Saratoga Trail 
in the wee early hours of Monday morning. You'd be wrong again, Kessinger. On Sunday. So did you ever talk to him late on Sunday night? No, we were on the phone, but I mean, I, I had to let him go and get up and go to work. That was so the 9 to 11 call that we, it was like a two hour phone. And that's Can you go back a little bit. Sorry about that. It's like basically at midnight on Monday, August 31st. So um, his wife gets home sometime at about two o'clock on um, that morning. So no, she got home on Sunday. Pardon me, she Sunday. Sunday. She got home on Sunday. So did you ever talk to him late on Sunday night? No, we were on the phone, but I mean, I, I had to let him go and get up and go to work. That was so the 9 to 11 call that we, it was like a two hour mm -hmm. phone call we talked about yesterday on Sunday night from 9 p.m. to 11. And that would have been the last time that mm -hmm. I talked to him until the work day on Monday. And that's when he texts you at like 3.45. No, we talked during work. Remember, I told you he like randomly texted me throughout the day at work, but it was like it was just like bullshit conversation. Oh, okay. was well, interestingly enough, I have a video about this. We're gonna talk about it again soon since I'm deep diving back into this case a bit. Um, I'm not even gonna go there because we're gonna rabbit hole. But hold the thought that you just heard about her saying. But did, Kovac says, did you talk to him late on that evening? And she says, well, no, we talked, but then I had to let him go because I had to go to work because I'm a responsible, financially managed person who's like, I'm very rational and do very rational when I deal with things. And like, you know, there's like no drama and like all my finances are together, my 401k, you know, the perception that she wants people to have of her, which is not who she is at all, but she says, no, well, we talk, but, you know, I had to go because I had to be a good girl and get up for work, right, 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 well, this is what I was trying to play in the very beginning when I have those technical glitches, now, but listen to what she says about the same thing and the same kind of question in the interview the day before, and I have to believe that Kobach picks up on all this. Okay, okay. The night before, you know, his wife. Okay, listen. Sunday night from 9 p.m. to 11. And that would have been okay, awesome. listen to, again, this is going to be what we just heard in the seven, the August 17th video, and then we're going to hear what she said in the day before, one after the other. Um, his wife gets home sometime at about 2 o'clock on um, that morning. So no, she got home on Sunday. Pardon me, she Sunday. Sunday. She got home on Sunday. So did you ever talk to him late on Sunday night? No, we were on the phone, but I mean, I, I had to let him go and get up and go to work. That was so the 9 to 11 call that we, it was like a two hour phone call we talked about yesterday on Sunday night from 9 p.m. to 11. And that would have been the last time that I talked to him until the work day. That's the meat of this let's, whole situation. Let's get to the phone call on Saturday from 9 to 11. Uh, what did you guys first pardon me on Sunday? Okay. Sorry if you heard some background noise. I got DoorDash. I was just bringing the stuff in. <laughs> um, so now this is in juxtaposition to what she just said, what she said about talking to him late the day before. 9 to 11. Yeah, we talked a few times. So... Sunday. Okay. Okay, so I need to think. I can't even think. Take a couple breaths and take it. Take a second. I mean, I. I don't even know. I don't think I was like concerned about anything at that point. You guys had had a meal, a nice meal the night before. You knew his wife was probably coming home late right that evening. Oh, um, you know what? <clears throat> I still don't remember what we talked about. I like honestly, like we talked about so much random stuff. Like it's so hard to pinpoint some of these things. Um, I don't remember what we talked about. I do remember that was a long phone conversation. That we probably talked about all sorts of stuff. Um, um one Anything? thing I do remember though, 
Um, but I didn't remember earlier when I was talking to Mark. So this is like where I'm starting to remember like little bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. I, I don't That's remember. Weird. Yeah, I know. So the phone conversation, I don't remember what was in the phone conversation. Probably nothing of relevance, to be honest with you. But um, <laughs> usually he talks to me when he's like. Right. And then in this interview, she says she wasn't concerned at that point. Exactly. Contradictions all over the place. Lies, 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 lies. Motherfucking liar pants on fire. Sorry for the French, but it's unbelievable that they just let this slide. Unbelievable. Like down in the basement in his bed before he goes to bed and before I go to bed. And I could hear the TV on, which I thought was kind of weird. I didn't ask him. I just heard it in the background. And I remember thinking, and it was like right before we got off the phone. I was like, why the hell is he up? And there's like no TV downstairs. So it was like, well, maybe so I don't no know. no TV in the basement where he usually calls you from. Yeah. And I don't know how many TVs they have. Like I've never been in their bedroom. So I just wanted to say good morning. I'm in the middle of getting ready. Um, Bella woke up. Okay. Come here. She's trying to climb the bed right now. Like I went upstairs once and it was like to their little playroom. And I just like looked at it and I was like, that's super cute that your girls have books. And that was like it. And other than that, I have never been in any of those rooms in that upstairs. Like, to me, it was just like, you don't know. I had no, so I don't know if he has any other TVs. I'm assuming by, like, how much other nice stuff they have in their house, it wouldn't surprise me. So I'm not quite sure what room he was in at that point. Um, but I just remember hearing the TV, and I was like, it was just weird to me. Because I was like, why are you watching TV right now? It was, like, super late. What? Oh, what? What? It's super late? Did you just say it's super late? But I thought you weren't on the phone with them super late because you had to get off so, to work. Because the, when she just said that, I was like, why are you watching TV right now? It's super late. That was on the 16th before she knew that Kobach and law enforcement had her past seven days worth of text messages. That bomb, that was the bombshell and it was dropped on her. Or you got things backwards as usual. That bomb was dropped on her during this phone interview on the 17th and now all of a sudden of course she changes her story and his wife gets home sometime at about two o'clock on um that morning so no she got home on sunday pardon me she sunday. sunday she got home on sunday so did you ever talk to him late on sunday night no, we were on the phone, but I mean, I, I had to let him go and get up and go to work. That was so the 9 to 11 call that we, it was like a two-hour phone call we talked about yesterday on Sunday night from 9 p.m. to 11. And that would have been the last time that I talked to him until the work day. Um, but I just remember hearing the TV and I was like, it was just weird to me because I was like, why are you watching TV right now? It is like super late. Yep. Just changes her story based on what she knows or doesn't know that law enforcement knows. It ain't nothing but cover my ass from that girl. So I just wanted to make a point of that because it's important. And all of these things really that we can observe when we compare what she said become important because they paint a picture. And that picture's overarching theme is gross deception across the board time and time again without ex exception oh god i just can't believe they let this go law enforcement i can't believe it it's unbelievable i remember when i was telling you when i was talking to my dad about this and specifically how da work handled things i was just talking about this kind of recently before my dad passed away um and my dad is an a, an attorney he was a kick-ass attorney um until he went to work on Friday and he passed away on Sunday in December. He was hardworking. He was super dedicated. He would, you know, do work for anybody, regardless of who they were, how much they could pay or whatever. He knew the law inside and out. When he sat for the um, bar exam, actually, he got the highest score of anyone seated for the bar exam on that day in New York State. He was super smart. Anyhow, so, you know, we discussed the watch. We discussed all these cases at times. And, um, you know, when I was talking about how things went down with Rourke, we were having a conversation about Rourke and this case, and we were like missing each other and communicating. And um, we finally realized that my dad just made the assumption that based on what Rourke did, 
that he lost his job because that's what he fully believed should have happened to Rourke. And I was like, no, dad, he's still a DA. And he was like, oh my God, that is an absolute disgrace. That man should not be the district attorney any longer. He couldn't believe it. Um, I can't remember where I was going with that, but yeah, that's what he said. And he knows. <laughs> I mean, he's just a really, really excellent attorney. <laughs> was. All right. Children's sheets were smelly. They smell. Okay. Yeah, so let's let's get back to that because I feel like you and me are kind of getting up track. Yep. So go to those, those those that that first long phone call on Monday night was I think when he told me that I don't think he told me that in the FaceTime text. I mean in the FaceTime conversation. I think he told me that in the first conversation where he was like, "Their sheets smell," and I remember thinking to myself like why like you keep such a clean house like why would your kids sheet stink and like it just didn't really click did, and then did you confront night, him I was, why they what's up did you confront him why the sheet smelled or did you inquire why no no no, no, no. i didn't even ask do, do you know ask, his yeah. i mean uh his children were quite young and i think one of them was still in diapers um would, would have that been a potential reason you know, that one of them had an accident or did it seem like that's not what he was talking about? I don't know. I mean, he didn't elaborate. Okay. He was just like, I mean, like I said, he always cleans the house, but even if his kids were to be in diapers and like have accidents, like I just feel like the man keeps his house so clean and she does too. They both must have to, to like coexist in a house that clean. But like, I just don't see anything in the house like smelling. Okay. All right. So that was why I brought that up because I was like, whoa. Okay. Very important. Um, Thanks for remembering that. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm really trying to help you guys. I just, I need you guys to help me too. Like, yes, ma'am. This is a team, but just don't. <laughs> so, the, me down, the re oh, there's one of our favorite parts. I'm trying to help you guys. I really am. We're going to do this as a team. Just don't fucking let me down. Now, listen to how, like, listen to how. Kobach, I keep wanting to say Kober, Kobach reacts. He gets all flustered, and you can tell he's just like, I want to, like, yeah. Like, he's not happy. Here. Oops. Jeez, this is so crazy. Just don't look. We can do this as a team. Just don't fucking let me down. Unbelievable. I can't, I just can't even, I can't imagine saying this to law enforcement. I just can't imagine, I just, the things that come out of her mouth, I can't imagine having that attitude, saying that, being that way, being that disrespectful, it's, 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 it's hard because it's beyond, like, I think most of our understanding. Be anything in the house, like smelling. Okay. All right. So that was why I brought that up. Cause I was like, whoa. Okay. Very important. Um, Thanks for remembering that. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm really trying to help you guys. I just, I need you guys to help me too. Like yes, we'll do this as a team, but just don't. <laughs> so fucking let the, me down, the reason I, why um, we can't, like I do, I think uh, I did think about this yesterday that I would like to sit down with you once we um, have your text messages and the phone calls and we can put them in a, in a uh, some type of easily looking that we can sit down and look at them and compare them and we can kind of get the context of how everything was going that night. I would like to do that with you, unfortunately. So the download that we got yesterday is gonna take uh, multiple days to be analyzed. I probably won't have it back till next week. And then because you guys did have so many um, text messages, uh, there is one of my analysts is working on getting those in order. So we can put something together where we can actually sit down and discuss it. But I do think that's something that we would I want to do in the near future, sometime probably next week. I mean, I can do that. I don't mind giving you guys my time. I just need you guys to like help me with my employer and try to just help me brace for this media thing and just try. So no, I think your me. personal oh, mental health is the number one cute. issue. Too. So let me pause, please pause. You know, I don't mind helping you guys out, but you know, I need on this, 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 and this return. Blah, 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 Cause I really need to get my life together. She doesn't give a flying fish about what happened to those babies and that mom and the it's just crazy now spoiler alert she's going to talk about in a little while and this is what made me really think 
about what Keshchik commented earlier on, saying that she thinks that the bombshell Kessinger gave to law enforcement was where the children were located in the tanks. Um, just before this interview, guys, she um, read the newspaper and found out for the first time that Bella and Cece were, their bodies were left in those oil tanks. I mean, how could you not be shaken to the bone? I mean, we learned about those details, what, five years ago? And it's, I still have a visceral, visceral reaction. Like every time someone says it, or I think every, all the time, I, I, I react to it on a, like an, like an innate, like cellular level. Every time the thought crosses my mind of those babies being in those crude oil tanks, and she just couldn't possibly care less. It is so callous. I feel that it is completely pathological from a behavioral analysis, psychological therapy, clinical perspective. And no, I have to be very careful what I say because I know ethically, I, of course, I am not diagnosing. I would never try to diagnose somebody I don't know and haven't worked with and don't have the right or privilege to diagnose. Um, but it's just my opinion as a lay person that this goes beyond narcissism. This goes beyond, you know, oh, well, that person is a narc. That person's narcissistic. So they act like this. And, you know, we all have had those conversations. We've had those thoughts. Narcissism is something that we talk about a lot in true crime and in our society these days. I think that her callousness and icy coldness and lack of care, compassion, empathy, or fucking feelings for any other human being on earth goes beyond narcissism into the realm of pathology. And I, you know, more and more, nothing has changed my mind the other direction. Every single day that passes, I'm more convinced that she just might be an evil, evil human being. I really think that. Let me help you with that and get in a victim advocate to call you. Um, and you can address questions of employment with them. I think they're better suited to answer those questions than I am. Um, so I, I would ask you to direct questions to them. If they can't answer them, um, I'll try to help you as best as I can. I think you have a personal decision to make on what you want to do with your employer. Um, I think you're, you're kind of backed into a corner um, and, and you are going to, it's a tough decision. Do you want to inform them of what was going on? But um, I will tell you that I think that when they started looking at information for us, um, and I clarified this this morning because I didn't do some of the work on this, but there was either text messages or emails between you and Chris that were on, yeah, that were on company related phones or on company company related computers that um, they were privileged to look at. So they already know about you. Okay, so yeah, I just I don't know if I'm going to keep my job. I hope that they don't fire me for that. I mean, technically, I'm not an APC employee, and he is, and it was his phone and not mine. So, well, like, I don't, I, I don't, think, I don't think that's fire. Like, I don't know labor law. I'll just put it that way. I think that you know, whatever. I mean, people have relationships at work, and you guys were smart enough to stop the stuff. However, you guys did it. Do. Is it an unusual circumstance that two people who got together at their place of employment, this terrible tragedy happened? Yes. Do I think that they are going to do anything to you? I don't think so. I mean, if you read the paper today, you saw they already fired Chris. I mean, that, oh, yeah, that, well, as they should, that, but <laughs> right. I'm hoping they're not going to fire me. Well, too. and I think you tough. need to head that up. Um, I think if it was me, and this is just a personal, this is not a professional opinion, it's a Oh gosh, just gets it. Thank you guys, by the way, for you guys. Um, many of you like said very nice mess things about or many nice comments when I was talking about my dad. Thank you so much for your support just now. And since my dad passed away, I've been like very open to you guys about all of that. And your support, guys, really is just it's so touching and it's really, it's really just helps sustain me. So oh, I want to cry, but you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. It really just means the world. Um so um Jesse Essex says like the name Essex. I think that's a cool name. <laughs> um, says, isn't it weird how Chris complained of smells and also Bella complained of sm a smell? So, you know, I, gosh, I didn't come out and even like say that, that I, that I believe this for a very, very long time because I don't know, there's some, some things that I just feel are, are almost like too sensitive 
to discuss unless you're discussing them because you have the facts and you're discussing them in those terms. Um, and I don't have the facts for this thing that I'm going to talk say right now. But more and more, again, as time goes on, I believe this to be the case. And your question here lends to the answer that is related to my theory that I'm about to explain. I think that Bella complained about smell and Chris was complaining about smell, had to wash the girl's sheets because, you know, I think when they were in the truck, you know, the smell probably was because, you know, Shanann evacuated herself as people often or is living things often do when they die. Um, and so that was the smell. And I think I, I, I'm leaning towards believing that he did try to do away with the girls in the house. Um, and I'm leaning towards believing that, um, I was going to say he was successful, but that's not the word that, um, his attempt to do away with Cece in the house was complete and that she passed in the house. So if that is the case, just like with Shanann, when she passed, she probably evacuated her bowels and bladder is, is a natural function. And I think that is the smell he's talking about, why he had to wash the sheets. Just like that is the smell I believe that Bella was talking about when she was the only, oh my God, my heart breaks to say this. I almost can't get the words out. Oh my God. When she was the only living being with Chris Potts in that truck. Oh my gosh, on the ride from Saratoga Trail to Survey. I, I, I believe that that is the case. So I think that um, that's why they both commented on the smells. Oh God, it's so hard to think about. I'm sorry, guys. I, I mean, this is all just a trigger warning, man. Yeah, you think so, Kazchuk? Yeah, you guys, okay, a lot of you agree. Yeah. Was that what you were getting at, Jesse, and asking that question? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm glad you asked that question because I hadn't even thought about that, what you're pointing out you know, kind of to bolster that theory that I've been so guarded and even talking about because it's just so sensitive and I don't want to just put bullshit out there about something so amazingly like, you know, sacred, someone's life. Um, but I just, I, I feel that that has to be the case. And my main um, reason for believing that is the way that Chris talks about um, mostly Bella, but Bella and Cece during the Dodge interview from February 2019, when the three investigators went and talked to him and, you know, they, I just put out a video the other day, which gives, is just, it's about his confession, but only the portion as it pertains to the last moments for those precious souls and what he had to say about it. And, um, you know, everything that had to do with that. Um, an indicator for Chris Watts of being truthful is that he gets emotional. The man doesn't have a lot of emotion. I, he definitely is, has a, a pathological emotional structure. Um, he, he, I don't, he's not, um, he, I think emotion is almost non-existent for him when he does show emotion, probably throughout his entire life, but definitely during that interview, I would, I would, I would certainly think that this could be generalized into in his life in general, but definitely in that interview, when he is emotional, that is when he is telling the truth. I feel certain of that just from, you know, my behavioral therapy background. Um, Cause his baseline really is deception. And when he's just kind of oh, nonchalant about things, Generally, he is being deceptive. When he actually shows emotion or connection to the topic, that is our indicator. That is our tell that Chris Watts is telling the truth. So every time he talked about Bella and those that final part of her precious life, he became emotional. And it was always about Bella. It was when they started talking about Bella, he'd be triggered and you could hear his voice crack. And I do believe he was crying and his breathing. You could hear the real raw emotion. He was being truthful. He was remembering what happened to that poor girl that he put his daughter through that, that I'm, I, I'm sure that it was absolutely fucking traumatic. He, even though, yes, he was doing it and he is a motherfucker and he is right where he belongs. But even so the end result for him is trauma, you know, doing that to your, to his child and seeing everything that happened is traumatic. It just is. 
So he was reliving that trauma. Um, he didn't have that emotion come through when he was talking about Cece. But in fact, he barely mentions her name. You'll notice in that part of the interview or that part of his story in his so-called third confession, he really talks all about Bella. And whenever they ask about Cece, he just kind of brushes it off, except for when they ask, um, you know, when they say, well, what happened when you got to 3319 in Kobach? I'm, yeah, geez. is it Kobach? I'm sorry, Coder. Jesus, Kessinger, Koberger, Coder, Kobach. You see the issue I'm having here? Um, when Coder, Graham Coder says to him, so who is first? Meaning, who did he do away with first of the girls when he got to survey after he took Shannon out of the car and set her aside near where she was eventually buried? Terrible. And Coder says, you know, oh, Bella was first. And Chris must give some nonverbal, you know, negative indication because he says, oh, no, I, oh, no, I'm sorry. It was CC. And then Graham Coder had been building up his questions to coax Chris Watts into telling the story with some detail about that final moment, the final breath. Now it's in the context of Cece. So he talks about then putting the Yankee blanket over her and like everything that happened. But I don't think that really happened to Cece at survey. I think that's what happened to Bella. Um, and there's a lot of, um, you know, how, how the story plays out and what the truth is, you know, whether or not CC was alive on that ride, there is a lot of, you know, implication towards the truth and us figuring out the truth, but that's a whole, I mean, we're going to be talking about this for a while. Um, do I digress? I think I just went in a little too deep into that, but, um, there you have it. So a lot of you do agree with that. Yeah. So I'm really glad you, um, you asked that Jesse. Yeah. Personal opinion, because I'm trying to help you as much as I can. I would, I would reach out to your employer and just say, I want to come and talk to you, but maybe talk to these, talk to your EA people, people first, and let me get you in touch with a victim advocate. Cause again, I think your mental health is more important right now than even your employment. I want you to make sure that you're comfortable and safe and everything that's happening and then make some, uh, you know, professional decisions and in, in regards to your appointment. Okay. Okay. So um, let me yeah, do that. And we can, uh, we can, I, go ahead. No, I have a couple more questions that don't relate to anything that we just talked about. Is there anything? I love it when he says that. So he's like, all right, you have some personal decisions to make about your employment. And he's trying to like brush her off on it. And then she's trying to get back in that conversation, just suck everything she can out of Kevin Kobach and his mealy self. And he's like, I don't got anything more to give. I'm just a mealy little man. But then he's like, um, I have some questions that aren't related to anything we just talked about. Like freaking get over it. You know, I just love it when he says that. It's like one of my favorite things he says, because I don't really like a lot of what he says. Let's listen to that again. Just that those words. Since I like them so much. <laughs> else that you remembered last night professional decisions and in in regards to your appointment okay okay so um, let me yeah, do that and we can uh, uh, we can i go ahead no i have a couple more questions that don't relate to anything that we just talked about is there anything else that you remembered last night that you want to address yeah a few so um i'm not done yet um, okay and then um and then we can talk about that whole thing too, because I was actually going to see if I could email them today. I was going to email my like upper upper boss, and and I was actually going to call her and see and just ask her. If she she won't stop with it. She just won't shut up. She's an Darko rep. See if she can have a schedule sit down with my employer Tasman and schedule sit down with EAP. And I want to get in a room with them all at the same time and just give them kind of a brief synopsis of what's going on and just ask them for help and see what they have to say. Yeah. But I was going to. I think Tell that's you a good I'm plan. Say to them and just ask your opinion on it because I don't want to give them too much. You do not need to tell them anything about the investigation or anything about what we discussed. Um, from my standpoint, the investigative pieces that we've talked about and um, specifically things that relate directly to um, why something may have happened or time frames or things like that, they don't need to know that. I think. Oh, I wasn't going to tell them that. I was yeah. just going to let them know I, that I was. You were in a relationship with, with him. Case and that yes. I was 
that I'm like a witness to this case and that right now it's pretty quiet, but, you know, in a few weeks, given how everything goes, it might become kind of a media frenzy. And I was just going to tell him, like, you know, I mean, I didn't commit any crimes and <clears throat> I'm not in trouble, but right. I'm working with the no, prosecutor like to... Listen to her when she says, I didn't commit any crimes, and her voice, like, really cracks. And, you know, from, like, a semen analysis perspective, I could interpret this a couple of different ways, going by, like, the tried and true parameters that, you know, people go by when doing a semen analysis. But I'm not sure what to think about this. So, listen. Listen to how her voice cracks when she says, I didn't commit any crimes, like, specifically crimes. I just, I really want to be able to crack this because it means something. Um, you know, there's a, 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 there's a sharp baseline change, but I don't, I don't have confidence that, that I understand what, what, what it means. So what do you guys think? A lot of times you guys know a lot more than me. Chime in, please. Try to help to bring some closure to this horrible thing and then just tell them like, you know, I just, I don't think the media is going to portray a very nice picture of me and it's just an unfortunate circumstance and. I, you know. I think that your projection of whatever is going to happen with the media can be reserved until that time. I don't think, I know that's like your biggest fear in this, but right now I would not even address, I wouldn't address anything that hasn't happened. I think I would simply tell them, look, I, I am involved in this case. I'm a witness. And, and I, you know, whether or not I think they already know it, and I'm sure Andarco is going to talk with whoever your employer is to make them aware of that. And then right. working with the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. just going to let them know I, that I was, you were in a relationship with, this with them. case and that I yes. was, that I'm like a witness to this case and that right now it's pretty quiet, but you know, in a few weeks, given how everything goes, it might become kind of a media frenzy. And I was just going to tell them like, you know, I mean, I, didn't commit any crimes and <clears throat> I'm not in trouble, but right. I'm okay. So again, with... Sorry. All right. Let me go back again. I just want to, if somebody, if you guys could just, if you have an opinion, offer what your opinion is, why, why the voice change here? Become kind of a media frenzy. And I was just going to tell them like, you know, I mean, I didn't commit any crimes and <clears throat> I'm not in trouble, but right. I'm working with the prosecutor to try to help to bring some closure to this working with a prosecutor. Oh, DA Rourke, she's just so shoved up your empanada. I'm sorry, empanada. Thank you, Stevie, by the way. I always do a tilde with that. I know it's wrong. Thank you for reminding me. A relationship with this case and that I yes. was, that I'm like a witness to this case and that right now it's pretty quiet, but, you know, in a few weeks, given how everything goes, it might become kind of a media frenzy. And I was just going to tell them, like, you know, I mean, I, didn't commit any crimes and <clears throat> I'm not in trouble, but right. I'm working with the prosecutor to try to. Okay. So anyone have any thoughts on that? You know, poor sweet Bella. Yeah. I saw a lot of you. Yeah. That, like a lot of you were thinking it, that was probably what happened with CC and all oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. So sad. I mean, it's beyond sad. I sad is like, and I like feel stupid when I say, "Oh, it's so sad." It's like there's just no, there's literal, there's no words. There's no words. Gosh. All right. Um. Yeah. So, let me go down and see if you guys. Bella resembled him a lot. Yeah, she sure did. Bella fought back. She sure did. Aww. Oh, Christina says, someone said, I forget who, that his eyes go back, go black. Actually, Kessinger says that um, to law enforcement in, um, it's either this interview or the one from the 16th. I, I can't remember. I was listening to her just earlier today, and she says, in his eyes. And when she tells this story, her experience about his eyes, when she saw the picture of him, his mugshot or whatever, the way that she's telling the story to, is also is an indicator for her that this is like, you know, this is from her soul. She is being truthful in her telling of this. And she just says his eyes, you know, they were black. She's like, I'm so serious, guys. Look at a picture of him before, you know, yesterday or whatever. And then look at that picture and you will see it does not even look like the same person. His eyes are black. It's like he has no soul. It's the creepiest thing I've ever seen is basically what she said. 
And I mean, yeah, I mean, I have to agree with that. I mean, I never don't never looked in his eyes, like human being to human being, only pictures, of course. But um, yeah, that's what it appears, right? Um, yeah. Um. Oh, Kestrick also says, also when he talked about Bella, what she said to him, he he talks about it in a child's language and like the words a child would use. I noticed that too. Very good point, um, Kestrick. Yeah, really good point. Um, no, he never said anything about Cece. That's right, Jesse. No. Nope. Oh. Um, now, Private Eye, you asked a question uh, a little bit ago, and I wanted to tag it, but I don't think I did. Um, but you, you said, so, like, there wasn't any, like, um, evidence or indication that there was anyone else in the truck. Well, Private Eye, I'm not going to go too far into this because some of you have heard me go off about this in live streams. I do have a video about it. Um, I'm going to see if I can grab it and put the, let's see. Oh, it might be a little too hard for me to do. I'll do it towards the end. I'll do it at the end. Um, I made a whole video about this, um, and it's one of my rage points with this case. There's a few, and this is one of them. I mean, there's there's a lot of them, but there's like a top. This is in my top five. They collected all the evidence from the truck. In fact, in the discovery, there is an itemized list of evidence that they did, in fact, collect from the truck that included trace lifts from the back seat trace lifts from the center console of his work truck, trace lifts from the driver's side seat, trace lifts from the front passenger seat, this like uh, all over in the truck, okay? They collected all of that evidence. Now, you know how it is said, and it's kind of a quote from Tammy Lee and also Rourke, that um, Chris Watts stopped the clock when he pled well, that's a nice thing for them to say, to kind of tie it up in a, you know, sort of like screwed up, warped law enforcement blue bow. But um, that's not really true because on September, it was before he pled. I think the date is September, I want to say third or maybe six, right around there. Um there is a, it's right when Dave Bonhover took over. So it's like the 3rd, 6th of September, something like that. There is a letter from CBI, Colorado Bureau of Investigations, the agency that Tammy Lee and Kevin Kobach work for, saying that they are refusing um, the uh, analyzing the evidence, the following evidence that was collected. These items of evidence that was collected when you were investigating this case and police were doing their work and the forensic, you know, people were getting their forensic stuff and all of this stuff should be tested to get a complete picture of what happened to eliminate those who are innocent and to include those who are guilty. So complete justice can be served for these victims. They failed. So in the items that they refused to analyze, even though they had them in their hot little hands were the trace lifts from the driver's side seat of Chris Watt's work truck. The trace lifts from the back seat bench of Chris Watt's work truck. The trace lifts from the center console of Chris Watt's work truck, the steering wheel, and a couple other places. What then happened to that evidence that was collected but refused, and that is the word that is used in the document for analysis, well, it was sent to the care of the um, Frederick Police Department in whatever unit that ultimately, guess what? Dun, dun, dun. District Attorney Michael Rourke oversees. Great. You know, because we know, you know, what's up with that. Isn't that incredible? I digress a little bit, but these, import these points are important. So um, Private Eye says, now, I do think he did it, but only went as, uh, it went in tanks as a cleanup job when the plan to get the Lexus to survey um, fell fell to bits. Maybe, maybe. See, I, you know, that was I, that whole idea of the explosion and getting the Lexus to survey and all that. 
I categorically rejected that theory for a very long time. And it was actually our, our, are you here, sweetie? She, I don't know, said something. I don't know. She, she's the one that put forth something that made me believe that it was a possibility. I'm not sold on it, but that's actually neither here nor there now. But yeah, good comments, good questions. Thank you guys. Um, oh. Cece trusted and Bella was more alert and leery. That is very, very true. Yeah, Jesse Essex says, and if it smelled bad in the truck and Bella said something about it, Cece would have chimed in. Absolutely, she would have. Oh my, I, I certainly believe so. Hmm. Didn't NK mostly only mainly say Cece, like when she was talking about the girls? You know what? You're right. Um, she went on to describe um, Cece's personality, apparently, as it was described to her by Chris Watts because she's saying oh, I didn't meet them um you know and, and she, yeah she did go into some detail about Cece a few times but never Bella I that's a very good point yeah I, I didn't really ever think that through dang it Nancy says uh, he mentioned something about beautiful Bella having black eyes when she woke up that bothers me yes he did and oh god and i never had heard this before as many times as i listened to that confession from dodge it wasn't until i was making the video and editing it the other day where he talks about you know this is all trigger stuff right so where he talks about you know what oh god i don't even know if i can repeat it I, um yeah I, I i don't yeah um i wish i could just grab the video really quick maybe i will it'll just take me one second Let's just listen to his words. I don't want to try to repeat it. See, I don't like, I mean, I don't like talking casually about this topic at all because it's, it's just, I mean, it's their lives. It's sacred. And I just don't want to be casual about it. Well, not too. Okay. Okay, here. Okay, let's just Um, all right. Okay, so whoops. Oh, God. All right. So we're going to listen to just a little bit of the conf his confession about, you know, what we were just talking about since it came up. So I'm just letting you know that that's what's going to be you'll be hearing right now if you don't want to hear it so you can, you know, do something different. OK. And then we're going back to finishing the interview. Did they ask you what you were doing, taking mommy out, or? Yeah, I don't remember what I told them, but they did ask them. Yeah, what well, they say specifically. They're more of like, you no, know, what are you doing, to mommy? Okay. I mean, is that when you buried her? I didn't. Well, I didn't tell. I don't remember if that I dug a hole there first, or. But I don't. Or they didn't watch me do that. Okay. So then pulled Shanann out. She's maybe just sitting there on top of the ground. Yeah, like off to the side. Off to the side. Close to where she ended up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Guys, I just noticed something else he and said there that I hadn't sure. noticed before. He says, he talks about, he says, you know, d digging the hole for Shanann, but they didn't watch me do that. But if they were sitting in the car, you know, just this lends to the theory that the hole was dug prior to when he arrived with Shanann. It's at Servi, perhaps the day before or the morning. I had never heard that before. And here in one hand and over her mouth. Beside, close to where she ended up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then the girls, right? Okay. You mentioned Bella was first. He sees you first. Okay. This is what I was talking about, guys. 
where exactly was she when it happened? In the back seat. Okay, was she just right next to Bella? So now here, this is what I was talking about. So, so you see how, you know, he goes, so Bella was first? No. And then. So once again. And then it? Chris must have shook his head no or something. And so then Coder goes, oh, so Cece was first. And this is a problem with these investigators answering the questions for Watts and just talking too much when they should be asking the question and allowing him to tell his story. They're answering the questions for him creates a fictional story when they are there for the purpose of getting the truth. It makes no sense to me. But see, just listen to how this goes down and why in this instance, he actually talks about Cece because Coder kind of forced him into it here. Up the ground. Because Chris Watts is so spineless. I mean, a normal person, this is not forceful. But for Chris Watts, he just goes with whatever, right? Yeah, like off to the side, off to the side, close to where she ended up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the girls, right? Okay. You mentioned Bella was first. Cece is first. Okay. Where exactly was she when it happened? In the back seat. Okay. Was she just right next to Bella? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so once again, was it? hand over her face with it there's a blanket over and my hand and then your hand okay and then so that just stopped her from breathing i think okay did she struggle at all i don't think so but my it, i was blocking her face and my hand was right here oh okay yeah. okay you had one hand here and one hand over her mouth and we're pushing her against the back of the seat i think okay what was bella doing sitting there next to it. she didn't know what's going on okay could she see you? Okay. Um, and then did that take a minute or two? It really nothing, nothing. I had no way contact at the time at this okay. point. Okay. Tell me about what you were thinking. I was so I was thinking in sort of path. Yeah. Or any partial hint of what I feel for those girls and what I feel for my wife, but none of this would have happened. So I don't, I wasn't thinking. Okay. So she's in the back seat. Okay. Um, and then once she's gone, then is it Bella next or is, did you pull Cece out? I pulled Cece out. Okay. So once Cece's gone, Bella's still there in the car alive. And then you pulled Cece out. What'd you do with her? So she went into the tank and Bella was still in the back of the truck alive. Um, with regard to that tank, did you bring up CC, put her down, open the hatch? Brought her up, open the hatch. And I put her in. Okay. When we talked the very first time we met, when we were talking about this, it was a matter of just lowering, lowering her down. Okay. And so she went in feet first. Okay. Was she able to fit pretty well? Was it snug? I think so. Okay. Did you have to like move her around a little bit and get her in there? I think so. Okay. All right. No, I didn't have to like, you know, hit her like, you know, from okay. my back. It's not like you stomped her in. No. Okay. Um, and then close the hatch. Yes. Okay. And then went down to Bella. Tell me what happened there. She said, what happened to CC? Or she has did the same thing, the exact same thing that happened to me as you see. Did she ask you that? Okay. So that was pretty smart. How did she sound when she asked you that, Chris? So that 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 soft voice she always had. What exactly did she say? She said that did the same thing that happened to me as you see, and then I said. I don't even remember what I said. Yeah. I don't know what I said. If I just said yes, like a horrible person, or if I just put this, put that blanket over her too, and did the same thing. Same blanket, same way. Mm -hmm. Okay. She said no, Daddy. And that's the last thing she said. Did she say no, Daddy? Like, please, no, Daddy, type thing. Did she say, okay, don't do it? She said, she said no, Daddy. Okay. Same way, hand on neck, hand over mouth, or hand over blanket with the double mouth. 
Did that take a couple minutes? I like it. Then, then what? I just noticed she had a couple spots like over her eye or something. And That's what I was gonna talk about, but I like to, then something else he's gonna say. I just like that she had a couple spots over her eye or something. Like picked her up. And we talked a little bit earlier today about it. You don't remember why a different tank? And there wasn't a reason. I mean, they're both same tanks. I mean, they're just like I don't, I don't know why I did. So there's one. I, I never got up there. Does one catwalk lead to both? Oil well, can go on either tank. Okay, but if you go up one thing or something? No, when I was right without like smoothing the ground over. Um, wait. There's there. one other. Um, and then the other sheets. Um, and then give me just a sec. It seems to me and see. Went for that. And that's what I got. So he did part of it. Okay. Did she ever say at some point get off of me mm -hmm. or anything like that? She was laying. Okay, it's here. Okay. Whoops. I know, kind of know where the what pictures I put with what here. Wait, just... over to the part right off the side, the side there. Okay. Were they talking to you? Just about, you know, just saying, yeah, it smells. Oh. It was early in the morning. They were showing up there. Yeah. And I and I believe you. I'm just um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to make sure that I'm giving you all the <laughs> opportunities to be comfortable enough to uh -huh. tell me exactly. Okay. They they were like okay. okay. Trust me, I hear that every every day when yeah, he says, me, yeah, sorry. yeah, trust me, they were alive. And I hear that every day when I go to bed. And what is it? Bella saying, no, daddy, you know. Yeah, Cece was. Oh, really? When she said, daddy, no. When we were driving to the site, she said, daddy, it smells. Oh, okay. So it's only Bella's voice he hears. So that, that goes back to. Maybe Shanann evacuating herself. I don't know if it was that. I, they know that smell like the like a. Were they talking to you? The at one side. I, I didn't I think so, but my us blocking her finger. Here. Oh, okay. You had one hand here and one hand over her mouth. Yeah. And we're pushing her against the back of the seat type thing. Okay. Uh, what was Bella doing? Uh, Sitting there next to it. She didn't know what was going on. Okay. Could she see you? Okay. You can't really want to get one. the fact, but it was just like, I don't. Yeah. I feel like, like that during I, that. I just didn't, it felt like it was just like anger. Yeah. I didn't look. Come on. Just to a place off to the site. Mm -hmm. And then. What were the girls doing when you were doing that? Okay. Is that what you were going through your head? Girls, like, it's obvious to us. Um, I'm not going to be able to find it again. when you're shooting them or something like that. I don't know. We're going to have to go back to this sometime. But anyway, sorry, I digress. But I just oh, want since it, oops. That's what I'm since it came up. What happened? So many get off her and then I put my hand on And you guys all seem to be participating in the conversation. I just wanted to clarify all that but yeah all right oh such a tragic mystery oh my gosh just, yeah, terrible <laughs> all right back to the um um the interview to bring some closure to this horrible thing and then just tell them like you know i just i don't think the media is going to portray a very nice picture of me and it's just an unfortunate circumstance and you know i think that your projection of whatever is going to happen with the media can be reserved until that time i don't think i know that's like your biggest fear in this but right now i would not even address i wouldn't address anything that hasn't happened i think i would simply tell them look i I am involved in this case. I'm a witness. 
And, and I, you know, whether or not I think they already know it, and I'm sure Andarco is going to talk with whoever your employer is to make them aware of that. And then, hey, I had a relationship with this guy and that's all they need to know. They don't need to know anything else. Um, and, and then, I mean, you have to protect your, um, your employment and, and your personal well-being. So think of the best way to do that and just minimal information. You don't have to tell them very much, but I do think you're uh, on the right track of getting ahead of it. Uh, but again, I, I can't, I'm not an attorney, especially a labor attorney. So you, you have to make decisions for yourself on that. But th some of the people um, here in the victim advocate realm may be able to give you some better advice uh, than, than I. I was hoping to do that today. Sure. I will make a phone call today to and get, get um, the ball rolling on this yep. because I would like to either go to work on Monday or like figure yep. out what is going yeah. on with like a fresh week and like try to put my yep. life together because I think it will help. Yeah, I think getting back to work and not oh. sitting there and dwelling on this at every moment is going to be very beneficial to you. So I, I will reach out to those people who handled that today. I, if I had a name, I'd give it to you. I don't. Um, but I'll see who's available. Okay. So okay. what other... I want, to, I want to reach out to them today. Okay. Them. I'll, I'll, as soon as we're done here, I'll, I'll make that my next priority. Thank you. What, what other things is there that um, you thought of last night? Oh, um, so I don't know when this phone conversation happened. I think that this was Monday at some point as well. I think it might have even been the same phone conversation as him washing the sheets and everything. Um, he, I think it might have been the same conversation. Um, he informed me that her friend Nikki's son uh, was at the house when the cops came and that he was running all over the house and up and down in all the rooms. And at this point, I was like, well, is anything missing? Because I was thinking on Monday that this girl had just left for the night. So I was like, well, maybe if she's staying with Nikki or somebody, maybe she forgot some stuff. So maybe they're sending, you know, they're like sending him in, like, hey, go get a toothbrush or go get this or go get that. Like, I didn't, I didn't know. And so he's like, yeah, this little kid was like running all over my house and then all the different rooms in the house. And I was like, well, is anything missing? And he was like, he was like, well, there, I think there's some blankets missing from my Dude, he's like, this kid was running all over, all over my house. Well, yeah, well, at least somebody's doing something to look for your missing pregnant wife and children. My God, this is, oh my God, these people are just, there's just, there's no words for these two. My kids' rooms, but I don't think he took them. I think she did. Okay. So he said, little kid, do you know how old this man was or boy was? Oh, Nikki's son? I don't know. Okay. I think he's like 10 or 12. Like, I think he's like a, like a, yeah. Well, actually, Nicole Kessinger, he's 16. And when he was interviewed by law enforcement, his mom was allowed to go into the interview room with him because he is, after all, a minor. But his mom was instructed to shut the fuck up, unlike your dad, who ran the show. So, you know, just saying. I don't know. I think he's like 10 or 12. Like old enough to like process information and run around the house. So he said he thought that the kid didn't take him, but that maybe um, Shanann had taken him. Yes. That's a uh, weird. Okay. So Nikki Sunny's like ten to twelve, and uh, I'm just making some notes. Just a sec. Take your time. Okay. What else? Oh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Um, I don't know. I feel like I have a list in my head, and I almost wrote it out. So how about this? And I was going to mention this last night, but I think both of us were pretty tired. Um, 
and we were we were there for a long time yesterday. So if you have a thought, keep a notepad and a pen and paper with you and write it down, and then that way you don't lose it. That that way, you, and then you can just call me and we can discuss it, and and we're done, um, and then move on. Then you don't have to think about it anymore. Does that sound like a decent idea? It does. Okay. I don't know what else I was going to tell you. Oh, well, oh, when we FaceTime, too. So let me go back to that, too. So okay. I think all of this was on Monday. So I think the, both the comments about the blankets and the sheets were on that first phone call on Monday. And then directly after that phone call, there was, like, a brief FaceTime. And when I FaceTimed him, he mm -hmm. was like, See, she knows her shit. When there's not something at risk for her, she feels like there's not something at risk for exposure for her. She knows everything, just detail by detail. No problemo. Like, he was laying on a bed that didn't have any sheets on it. Okay. And I remember, and he was like in um, just like, like, a, like a little wife beater top and he didn't really say much. It was like he wanted me to talk to him. He was like, I just wanted to see your face. And he, like, wanted me to talk to him, um, but he was, like, kind of quiet. And actually, that was why I got off the phone with him and we did laundry. And then so I would call him back on the phone because when we were FaceTiming, it was, like, kind of weird. I was like, uh, I don't really know where this is going. Like, you're not really having a conversation with me. So like, he was just removed. He he wasn't very engaged in the conversation. He was just like really fixated on like me. Like I bet you if I wanted to talk, he would have been okay with it. Just staring at you? Yeah. I mean, it was just like, it was really brief too. Like it was so, super short and I was just like, this is not going anywhere. And I remember telling him like, I will call you back, but let me go do some laundry. So I like got out of bed and went and threw some clothes in the dryer that I had forgot to put in the dryer prior to laying down. And then, um, I don't know, I think I might have did like one or two other real quick things. And then I got back in bed and then called him back on the phone. And that's when that second long phone call starts. Okay. All right, great. Anything else? Um, off the top of my head, I don't, I don't really think. So Cassandra asked about the other um, investigator's name, Kobach. His name was Tim. Kessinger. Uh, Tim, that's right. I knew it started with a T and I couldn't remember it. So this is the redacted part. So let's just, let's just listen to where, where that left off. Okay. So let's just think about this. So I'm just going back like 30 seconds. Okay. Um, he was like, I just wanted to see your face. And he like wanted me to talk to him, but he was like kind of quiet. And actually that was why I got off the phone with him and went and did laundry. And then so I would call him back on the phone because when we were FaceTiming, it was like kind of weird. I was like, uh, I don't really know where this is going. Like, See all those details she remembers, but no problem. So many details. You're not really having a conversation with me. So like, he was just removed. He he wasn't very engaged in the conversation. He was just like really fixated on like me. Like I bet you if I wanted to talk, he would have been okay with it. Just staring at you? Yeah. I mean, it was just like, it was really brief too. Like it was so, super short and I was just like, this is not going anywhere. And I remember telling him like, I will call you back, but let me go do some laundry. So I like got out of bed and went and threw some clothes in the dryer that I had forgot to put in the dryer prior to laying down. And then, um, I don't know, I think I might have did like one or two other real quick things. And then I got back in bed and then called him back on the phone. And that's when that second long phone call starts. Okay. All right, great. Anything else? Um, off the top of my head, I don't, I don't really think. So Cassandra asked about the other um, investigator's name, Kobach. His name was Tim. Kessinger. Uh, Tim, that's right. I knew it started with a T and I couldn't remember it. Um, he was asking me like, oh, did you guys ever talk about, it's noted unintelligible, stuff like that. And here's the deal. Like when it comes to Chris or any other man I've had in my life, like I always discuss important things like, like where do you want to be in five years? You know, get, are these, is this a type of man that wants to have kids in his case, more kids? Like, are you like, what type of house do you want to live in? Like, where are you at financially? 
like we started going over this last night and you know, one thing I want to express is when I had these conversations with him, it was not me saying I need a house and I want to get married and now I want to have babies now. It was never like that. Let's just leave your old life behind and start the, any of this. It was literally just like inquisitions of where do you see yourself? Like where do you and me ended up in like a long-term relationship like, what are you looking for? And for me, it's not because I'm trying to rush into a relationship. It's because I want to know what I'm getting into. I've seen people that are together for three or four years and never have the conversation of whether or not they want to have kids. Kobach says, okay. Kessinger says, or things like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Kobach says, yeah, no. Kessinger says. And it's just, I noted unintelligible to me. So that that's why I asked those questions. Kobach. And Ma, no, it, it makes sense. Kessinger. But it was like, never. It makes sense to me. I understand. I kind of get a picture of who you are. You're very organized. You're very thoughtful. Uh, you, like I said, you seem very intelligent and you make some decisions based on fact. And so you're, you're uh, inquiring if these people have uh, their life together. So it, it, I understand why you're asking those questions. It, it makes sense for me. I'm sorry. makes sense to me from a standpoint of who, what I can, who you are and how you do things. So um, it makes sense to me. Yep. Kessinger. Okay. I just, well, I just, I hope he didn't like misinterpret any of that, but you know, I always really tried to tell this man like, Hey, we need to take this slow. Oh God. Lies, lies, lies. I just want to let you know, I'm, I'm just going through comments right now. I'm about 10 minutes behind or so. So some of the comments I'm just pinning and I'm catching up to what's current in the video, so I just want you to understand that so it's not confusing, okay? Oh, so I don't know. He never seemed like he really wanted to take it that slow. I think he was like in fifth gear, like the entire time, you know, and it was me that was trying to tell him like, hey, you don't need to be like that. Yeah, and, right. and shame on me. I think if I'm in a relationship with somebody who's like trying to move a lot faster than me, then maybe it's up to me to hit the brakes. Because like, honestly, he was so kind to me that I just... Now, you see what she's doing there? Now, this is a classical, this is a classic way for somebody who is a pathological liar to justify their wrongs to their audience when they're trying to cover something up it's oh god what's the name for it i'm too tired to think of it right now but what they do is is they admit to a far less serious offense and she's like oh yeah you know my bad i like she's saying like she, and she she'll give little concessions like this very rarely because very rarely will she even to save her own butt Say that she was wrong or bad in any way but she's like yeah my bad the thing that I did wrong was to not be in charge of saying hey man you're got trying to get into this relationship way too fast and that's really not the responsible thing to do and I'm a responsible financially stable person who's like logical and rational and so for me to not say hey man you should slow down that's my fault. That's what I did wrong. It's just, it's, it's just so clear to me what she's doing. She's just so obvious. Just had a really hard time being like, why am I going to push him away? Kobach says, sure. <laughs> Kessinger says, and so I didn't. And it is what it is. Kobach says, well, I can see your, Kessinger says, um, I just, Kobach says, in the cards that you provided yesterday, I, I looked at them this morning, 
I think the earliest one was dated on your birthday, and he was quite uh, enthralled with you at that time, and you guys hadn't even been dating about a month by your account, Kessinger says. Oh, I think we probably had sex, maybe like twice at that point, Kovac says. Right, and, and you started dating in June, Kessinger says. It was super early. Kobach says. Right. You guys dated, started dating in June. So you're having sex two times by the time he sends you that card. And the next one is like July 30th, if I recall. And I mean, he's basically telling you he's infatuated with you. And then he hand writes a note um, that says, you know, you're his life. I is the way I kind of read that. So, I mean, he was, he was very, um, he, I can see what you mean by him moving very quickly. Uh, that, Kessinger says, yes, I mean, Kobach says, that's obviously just in those cards you provided. Kessinger says, yes, yes, you know, and, and even then, like, when I read these, I'm like, it was a little much for me, and I was like, damn, like if he even gave me two of them on one day and I was just like, it was, it was a lot, but at the same time, it wasn't really like a red flag. Like, I don't know. I've dated a lot of douchebags in my life. So having a guy that like wants to get me cards and roses and I mean flowers and stuff, I'm like, you know, maybe I'll just like rule with this and see what happens. Like, it was very different than anything I had ever had, but it wasn't uncomfortable. Like, it was more respectful than anything I've ever had. So I didn't like, it didn't really register to me that, hey, this might be a problem. Like, it's usually the people that treat you really bad when you're like, hey, this is an issue. So it didn't click, you know, and now I'm looking back and I'm like, whoa, like, I don't even think that this guy necessarily was really in love with me. I think this guy was lusting over me a lot, Kobach says. Right. I think that's a fair assessment. So let's move on from, from that. Um, there's a couple questions I didn't uh, ask yesterday, and they're very specific. You mentioned, you guys, obviously you're into fitness. And so was, did you guys go to the same gym? No. He worked out in the basement. I never went to the gym with him. Okay, so he. Oh wait. Do you know him to go to any okay, gyms? Oh wait, wait, wait. I mentioned this earlier when um oh god I can't remember who brought it up now was talking about you know something about oh it said that they met in the gym now, um, in in Sherilyn Cadles and I know I know don't you give me that side eye I know in her most recent book I did a video about it it was like a couple months ago um can't remember what it's called, but I mean, the <laughs> I gave you my opinion of the book in, in the video. I don't want to really give it again because it's not that great, but there's some things I believe um, only when I know that they're bolstered by evidence that I can, like, that's, that's independently verified, independent of her um, from a highly reliable source. But, you know, she says that in that book, and I think this is plausible, that NK and Chris did actually meet in the gym. And the reason that I give this like some stock over other things that she claims or other times people have said that they thought that Kessinger and Chris met in a gym was that was this. When um, Shanann's parents came and lived with them for like six months, um, when, uh, you know, Shanann was pregnant with Cece and they said she was having a hard pregnancy and blah, 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 you know. They were both working when they were in Colorado because they had to pay the mortgage on their house back in North Carolina. And, you know, it was, um, you know, they were living in the basement, even though, you know, some people have made a deal about, even though there's, some people have said there's four bedrooms. There's actually five bedrooms in that house. There's a master bedroom, there's Cece's bedroom, there's Bella's bedroom, there's the upstairs playroom, which is a bedroom. And then technically the downstairs office is a fifth bedroom, according to like, you know, the rules of the realtors. <laughs> so um, five bedroom house, the parents were staying in the basement. Maybe it was their choice. We don't know. I digress. Anyhow, 
apparently she said that during that time when Shanann's parents were staying with them, um, he couldn't go in the basement to work out because they were staying in the basement and maybe they wanted to stay in the basement and people get really pissed about that. And, you know, kind of irked me at first, like you, dude, you couldn't have freaking given them, given them a bedroom, but maybe they wanted to be in the basement. Maybe they wanted that privacy. We just don't know. Right. Um, so which makes me feel like they could have done the first floor, but anyway, there I'm go being catty again, kind of, I don't know. I'm just thinking things through. So anyway, Chris Watts could not go work out down in the basement. That's where all of his workout equipment was because Sandy and Frank were staying down there and they probably wanted some degree of privacy. And, you know, Chris is like a very like spineless chameleon parasite of a human being. And he probably would feel awkward, like, you know, even trying to discuss, hey, I know you're staying down there. That's like your space. I would kind of like to still use my workout equipment. Would that be okay with you? And if that would be okay with you, you know, maybe what are the times of a day when you feel like, okay with that? Like that would be a perfectly easy, fine conversation, right? No big deal. But anyway, he's not one to have easy conversations if they do anything other than go with the flow. So during the time that the Rusex were staying with them, Chris Watts still was working out. So he went to a gym. Now that makes sense. Um, so Cheryl Lynn says in that context, he met NK during that time. All right. Now, I know other people have speculated that they met at the gym for a number of reasons. And there's, you know, that picture of Nicole Kessinger on like that, like net rope wall. And it was a fundraiser. And, you know, there's there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different theories we could go into um, details supporting the idea that perhaps they met at a gym. OK, so now keeping that in mind, listen carefully to this part of the interview. Again, it was redacted, so I'm reading it, but here. No, he worked out in the basement. Right I never went to the gym with him. It wasn't, unco it wasn't uncomfortable. Like, it was more respectful than anything I've ever had. So I didn't like, it didn't really register to me that, hey, this might be a problem. Like, it's usually the people that treat you really bad when you're like, hey, this is an issue. So it didn't click, you know, and now I'm looking back and I'm like, whoa, like, I don't even think that this guy necessarily was really in love with me. I think this guy was lusting over me a lot. Ugh. Kobach says, right. I think that's a fair assessment. So let's move on from, from that. <laughs> um, I love it. Kobach says that a number of times in this particular interview where she's just talking about something that's so completely asinine and self-absorbed and callous and icy and out of touch with the fact that she just learned that Bella and Cece were recovered out of crude oil tanks. So, you know, say, okay, well, yeah. So let, let's move on from that. So at least, I don't know, give them a little credit for at least trying to usher her along to a proper topic. There's a couple questions I didn't uh, ask yesterday and they're very specific. Okay. You mentioned you guys, wait, wait, wait. obviously Sorry. you're ah, in fitness. Okay. And so he just said, there's a couple questions I didn't ask yesterday and they're very specific. So coming from law enforcement, let's think about this. What's it going to mean if law enforcement, you know, comes to a suspect, I mean, witness <clears throat> and has very specific pointed questions for them. That means that they want answers to something very narrow and specific because it is the missing piece of a puzzle or because they got information that might indicate something that they need to verify or not that obviously is important to you know the um possibility of the crime being committed the nature of the relationship between the two suspects i mean the suspect and witness or a number of different things so he just says I have very specific questions. I've, I, a couple questions I forgot to ask you yesterday. They're very specific. The first one is about the gym. So this, something about the gym, and he asked about Chris Watts, does he go to gym where, blah, blah, blah. And then he asked about her gym, something about where she goes to the gym and where Chris Watts goes to the gym that is of high interest to Kevin Kobach and to law enforcement where they have decided that that needs to be one of the strategically posed pointed questions for which they need an answer 
from this suspect. I mean, witness. Okay. And so was, did you guys go to the same gym? No, he worked out in the basement. I never went to the gym with him. Okay, so he, do you know him to go to any gyms? Because you said like you were planning for his apartment and how could he get to his gym and then do his day kids uh, school then to work, Kessinger says. Well, yeah, I was trying to get up because he was going to have to go to a gym if he had an apartment because he's not going to be able to set up all that gym equipment in the apartment, Kobach says. Okay, so he, Kessinger says. So, so right now, Kobach says, you know him, Kessinger says. He works out of his house, Kobach says. Okay, Kessinger says. But if he were to move, just because he's downsizing so much, I don't think he has that capability. I mean, I would love to have a gym in my apartment. That would be nice, but I just didn't think he had the capability. So that's why I brought it up. Like, because we were even discussing, like, what gym do you want to go to? You know, he was like, well, there's an anytime fitness over there. And I was like, well, it's, you know, it's close. It's open 24 seven and it's big. Like we had all sorts of discussions about that. Kobach says, okay, but you don't know him to ever have visited a gym? Kessinger says, not in the time that I um, was spending with him. Now, he did like work out with me one day at my house. Like we did a little bit of yoga and like, like an ab routine. I showed him an ab routine, but it wasn't at a gym. Kobach says, okay. Kessinger says, it was literally like on my living room floor on some yoga mats. Kobach says, all right, what gym do you go to? Kessinger answers, I go to a 24-hour fitness. Kobach asks, which one? Kessinger responds, uh, the one, it depends on the day, but usually the one off of, it's like Bradford, like it's like Vrain and 120th. So you notice how he keeps asking, they asked about the gym he, and he keeps asking, he keeps asking, he keeps asking. He's really trying to drill down to something here that is very important to law enforcement to have an answer to about the gym and CW going to the gym and NK going to a gym and where they go to the gym. And, you know, I, you know, I'm starting to think that maybe, you know, I think that they did, you know, although we say, oh, they did, she did, you know, did, they didn't investigate Nicole Kessinger. I mean, I don't, they did not investigate her nearly enough. And when, you know, it was clearly critical that she be investigated and certain things were very critical about her to be investigated, they dropped the ball like, you know, unbelievable, right? But I'm sure that they did some basic, like, you know, background checks things like that, things that law enforcement will routinely do where you can run someone's name and you, you get, you know, spit back, you know, a list or a spreadsheet or something of, you know, everywhere that has where they've registered using their social security number, the name or whatever. So I suspect that maybe they found at some point that Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger were members of a same gym and maybe the timing of the membership and something like that, you know, look particularly interesting to them and that's what this questioning is about what do you guys think about that Kobach asks our rain what street i'm sorry kessinger answers i think it's rain Kobach says oh rain kessinger says vr like victor Kobach says mm -hmm. kessinger reinforces rain Kobach confirms by saying, yep. Kessinger says, um, Bradburn, but it's, it's, it's over there. I think it's Broomfield one, but it's a big one. It's just west of the highway. Kobach now says, okay. And, um, so we, thank you, Angel D. I find that to be a compliment. Thank you very much. Asked last night, we, we were talking a little bit about, you know, Chris, dramatic, uh, weight loss during, uh, 
the first period of him working out and becoming yeah. a better eater. And I asked if he was taking any um, narcotics such, and you said no. The one question I didn't ask, do you know if he ever took anything other legal legal substances other than, you know, I, most people, when I say narcotics, I need to be more specific, you know, would see, think meth or something to that effect, but steroids, any of those things. Do you know him to use any of those? Quebec answers. I'm sorry. Kessinger answers. Not that I'm aware of at all. Quebec says, okay, so that leads me into, uh, Shanann was a promoter for lack of a better term, this product called Thrive. Kessinger. Yeah, I know a lot about that. <laughs> Kobeck says, okay. Kessinger says, he was always doing that. It's considered like a, I considered it a supplement, not a drug, but maybe Kobeck. So, so can you just, Kessinger, he always had that stuff. Kobeck. So it's a patch, right? I don't know a lot about it, but Chris, so Chris was always, Kessinger says, I don't either. Kobach using Thrive? Kessinger. Always. He always had at least two of those things stuck to him somewhere. He tried to get me to use them, but I was like, uh, no. Like, I eat clean. I go to the gym. I stay fit. I'm not going to stick some little thing on me. Kobach. So you think it's just kind of some, some kind of supplement? Kessinger. Uh, I kind of. I don't. I think it's bullshit, honestly, but it's just me. I don't, uh... I don't, I just don't know. I mean, I've always, I just, I eat natural foods and I go to the gym like four or five days a week. I don't even work out that hard, to be honest with you. I just still eat cheap meals. I enjoy my weekends. I'm not like a super gym addict. I've always stayed in shape. So when he came to me and he was like, Thrive helped me lose weight. And I never like dodged that. I was just like, if that's what helped you, that's great. But he said he plateaued on it. And I was like, well, that's because you're not her, her, um, you know, analysis of Thrive here is totally a dig on Shanann, don't you think? Not eating healthy, you know, because you don't need to on that stuff. But only you can lose so much weight on, like, diet supplements and diet plans before you, like, get stagnant. And then he was like, well, I want to eat healthier. And so that was when I was like, well... I'll help you like to, to get stuff, you know, just to show you how to eat healthier and like how to do that. And he was kind of, I was trying to get him to like do it on his own, but I was just kind of giving him some basic steps just from what I know. And from my experience, I don't know, just being in health and fitness, like lifestyle for the last four or five years. Kobach. Okay. So Thrive for him was something that he'd use on a daily basis, at least two patches on at all times. You said, um, but you don't think for you don't, it's just a supplement. And it, from what I did, my brief research over the last couple of days, it's kind of a, a product that might give you energy and help you lose weight. And there's kind of a life coaching sup uh, part of this thing in there. Is that a fair assessment of what you know Thrive to be? Kessinger answers, yeah, I guess. Like, I'd have him try to explain to me a couple times, and he really couldn't explain it to me. Like, I don't even think he knows in full depth exactly what this stuff is. Kessinger says, I'm sorry, Kobach says, okay, fair enough. Kessinger says, because I was just like, because he's like, do you want some of this? I'm like, no, I think, I'm like, if you could tell me what's in it, then maybe I'll try it. But I mean, I still, I think I even still have two of those patches in my purse that he gave me. Let's see. Cause I never used them. I was like, what am I going to do with this? Um, let me see. I might have them. I don't know. Maybe I don't. Yeah, I do. Go back. Okay. So you have some patches he gave you. Kessinger. Yeah. I never used them. Like those have been sitting there since probably close to the time we started hanging out. Go back. Okay. Kessinger, because I forgot I had those till just now. Go back. All right, then those are the only questions I had. Um, so if you'll do me a favor and as a uh, just new thoughts come up, just write them down so you don't lose them. And then give me a few hours and let me try to get some arrangements made with a victim's advocate 
to reach out to you regarding uh, some of your struggles here. And I'll get back to you the person's name so you know who they are. Okay, okay. I thought there's something else. See now, I remember these things that I was going to tell you today. Kessinger. Okay. Okay, I thought uh, there's something else. See, now I'm remembering these things that I was going to tell you today. Kobach. Okay. Kessinger, so um, you and Mark both asked me this question. So oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold it. Um, I'm sorry, I'm reading chat. There's some points I wanted to make in there, but I don't know, it's getting getting a little bit late. I'm losing my brain a little bit. But Jennifer, did you really do this? She, she says, I think I counted how many times she said the word like, and it was over 1,360 times. Did, did you really do that? Or are you being funny? I can't really tell. Because I, I mean, I believe it could be that much. Did you really do that? <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's so funny oh yes and you guys i started talking about um zawoki again and um he and i are going to collaborate um next week and the week after and next friday he's going to be on this channel i came up with an idea for us um you know particularly because i know a lot of you guys like both of our channels and it's for you i think you're going to find it to be really cool that you're on it by him but um I had an aha moment today and hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll work out, but he's going to be on anyway. Um, even if my super cool idea doesn't turn out to be super cool. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. He's good. I like, I like him. I like his personality. He's a kind and honest and like sincere person. I can, I can tell that about him. And you know, it's, as far as other creators go, I don't run into that very often on, on here. I mean, there's other creators I like, but you know, I've also had some weird run-ins, but yeah, he's a good egg. So oh, Saturday, when he and I went out to dinner, you and I, you guys both asked me, you said, so he came to pick you up. Sorry. I have another, I have a BK video in the works. It's a follow-up to the last one um, where we were talking about the um, Exhibit A and did we even really see the PCA and all the implications of that question. It's been a really long research project for me because, oh my God, I really had no idea how... Uh, how, how where this was gonna go but hopefully that'll come out i don't know i'm at, I have next week off of work yay but my son and i are going to visit my best so friend. i'm like <laughs> is this a trick question and then we're going to washington dc because i've never taken him there so i'm not sure if it'll be like early next week or late next week um okay so now kessinger is talking about hey i you i noticed that you and mark you know because she's constantly reflecting on not you know like you know, things about herself or, you know, you know, her levels of compassion for these poor victims or how she got on into this horrible situation, but rather she's obsessing and reflecting on the questions that law enforcement asked her. What do they know? What don't they know? And how much can I get over on them? So she says to Kobach, you know, I noticed both you and Mark asked me about, you know, did I drive my, did we drive my tr or truck to, uh, did I drive my truck to, the lost, lost dog, or no, lazy dog. <laughs> Sorry, there's a lost dog cafe near me. Um, on you know the Saturday before the murders, and she goes into all of this detail, and then Kevin Kobach responds to her, just saying, you know, don't overthink it because we're asking you for a specific reason, yes, but you're never going to figure out what it is, basically. Question? No, he didn't come pick me up. So I'm like, um. I told you guys we drove my truck and he never picked me up. Um, but I'm assuming it's something of significance that you guys both asked. What it is, it's not my business, but um, I don't know if it really matters at all, but he drove my truck. I didn't. Like we drove my vehicle. He was just the one operating it. I don't know if that really matters at all. Like Kobach says, no. Passenger, like I don't know if that's even relevant, but I don't think so. Kobach, I'll I'll just x. That's just so quick. So we're trying to verify what vehicle he was driving, because we didn't know if he had more than one vehicle. That's all I was looking for. Passenger, oh no, no, no. Kobach, okay. Passenger, okay. And then um, on that note, he. Kobach. And again, you said yesterday that the the only car he had is a Lexus. Kessinger. Yes. 
And then you guys asked too, you said, um, did he mention a Rockies game? And you asked me that last night about Saturday when him and I went out, you're like, did he mention a Rockies game? And the first thing my brain thought of was, well, no, we went to watch the Broncos game at the restaurant and didn't even watch it. <clears throat> and then I got to thinking and it, and I was like, did he mention a Rockies game? He told me the babysitter was watching the kids on Saturday night because he was going to a Rockies game. Kobach, okay, do you know why he lied to her? Kessinger, probably because nobody knows about us. Kobach, okay, all right, that makes sense because we, so we had heard you that he had gone to a Rockies game. So we, that's why when, you know, when we found out about you, what we were suspicious about him having um, a, a girlfriend. So that those were the lines of questions and don't read too much into the questions because the questions I have for you might not mean anything or they might mean a lot. So um, they're, they're more sometimes just to tie pieces together and tie time frames together to answer other questions that we don't have answers to. So don't, don't dwell into things too much like, you know, if he drove your truck or not. If we ask you something, just be truthful um, and give the response. And then, you know, don't don't dwell on what we're asking for because it's just going to drive you mad. Kessinger. Yeah, I know. I promised myself. I read the news this morning. I found out they I found out where they found those little girls. It's so disgusting. That's so scary. And then I promised myself after that, I was like, I'm not going to read the news for the rest of the day. And I've oh. been in a much better mood. So Gosh, I says, notes. there you go. I've only been listening to this interview earlier and yesterday that I made for you, but I'm just like getting tired and spacing out a little bit. So let me go back a little bit here. So this is what I was referring to about, you know, I, how I really had a, you know, like understanding of just how pathologic she's beyond she's beyond um narcissism that she's this is just like not normal listen to her talk about finding out that the girls were found in oil tanks and oh god she's just so gross this game so we that's why when you know when we found out about you what we were suspicious about him having um a, a girlfriend so that those were the lines of questions and don't read too much into the questions because the questions I have for you might not mean anything or they might mean a lot. So um, they're, they're more sometimes just to tie pieces together and tie time frames together to answer other questions that we don't have answers to. So don't, don't dwell into things too much like, you know, if he drove your truck or not, if we ask you something, just be truthful um, and give the response. And then, you know, don't <laughs> just be truthful. Good luck with that. Kobach. Don't dwell on what we're asking for because it's just going to drive you mad. Kessinger. Yeah, I know. I promised myself. I read the news this morning. I found out they I found out where they found those little girls. It's so disgusting. That's so scary. And then I promised myself after that, I was like, I'm not going to read the news for the rest of the day. And I've been in a much better mood. So. Oh, my God. So she says, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know what you mean. You can't like think about everything and try to analyze it. Hey, I read the news today and I found out that they found the girls submerged in crude oil tanks on an oil field in the open plains middle of nowhere's Colorado. And I was like, oh, that's so disgusting. So I decided, you know, I'm just not going to like pay attention to that crap anymore. And I feel much better now. I feel much better now. Dude, what the actual fuck? Like, five years later, I still haven't recovered from finding out what happened to those girls. And she's like, yeah, it's a couple hours later. And I made my, um, you know, day resolution to do something selfish for myself and I don't want to see that because that's really disgusting and so I decided that I don't need that because I, I, you know it's all about me and I feel better now she's disgusting she's disgusting like that is subhuman to me I just that's beyond narcissism I mean even narcissistic people be like 
shit, man, I better fake that I care about that. That's like unthinkable. I better get my fakeness on. Like she can't even go there. It's, it's, it's strange. It's really strange to me. I don't know. What do you guys think? So Kobach says, there you go. Kessinger. That's definitely helping. But I, uh, I did read something last night, uh, phone and article. And again, I know how the media is, but, um, I did read something, uh, where they interviewed one of his friends and his friend said that Shanann before all this happened was like getting ready to leave him and that she was suspecting infidelity with him and that Thank he, you, she had told her friend that, and it was just like made my stomach sink because I was like play, praying, like, I really, really, really hope that whatever conversation they had that night that like sparked all of this, that of this shit was not about me. Kobach says, right. Okay. Again, I don't think we ever, I, I told you, I don't think that there's an answer for uh, any of those questions right now. I think there's a multitude of reasons why these things happened and, and trying to pinpoint or uh, put a finger on why this happened or blaming yourself is not really going to do you any good. Uh, just like yesterday, you were concerned that you should have called the police on Monday and you really didn't have, I, with, with your assessment of, of going on there would be no reason for you to, now the other people, like I said yesterday, they had a war, more information than you did. And they took a step that you didn't just because of that information. And the same thing goes for this. There's no, so don't, don't beat yourself up over uh, what has occurred. I mean, this is out of your control. You didn't do anything to the, this woman and, or her children. Um, you know, unfortunate for you that you're tied to the, into this, but it's not your doing. So don't beat yourself up too much about it. Then Kessinger says, you know, Mark put it pretty good the other day. He told me, he said, you didn't do this. Chris did this. Kobach says, that's right. Kessinger says, he said, you're not on trial. He is on trial. And I was just like, that is a good way to look at it. I, um, okay, well, um, Kobach says, okay, keep that in mind. I mean, Kessinger says, well, I, Kobach says, well, there's things that happen in our lives every day that are out of our control. And unfortunately, this is one. It's a massive issue, but is there something you could have done? I think we... Oh, wait. Okay. So first of all, um, this is what I, you know, and again, again, I have under a moral and ethical coach let you know that I am not at liberty to make a diagnosis of you, myself, my buddy rabbit, any one involved in true crime, fictional characters on television or other such beings. However, my sense is borderline personality disorder for Kessinger as well. And that's what Ashley Victoria says. This is borderline personality type of stuff. No emotion, no empathy, um, uh, psychopathic, my opinion. I'm, you, you, don't, you don't need to be a doctor, but yeah, um, I, 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 I really go there with her too. Um, now in the interview here, she's again, you know, she's always bringing, she's like bringing it back to herself. She's like, you know, Mark said something good, you know, the other day he said, and what, what the statement is, is remember you're not on trial. Chris is not on trial. And I'm like, okay. And Kevin's kind of like, okay. And then she is like, yeah, you know, he, he, he says like, you know, um, I'm not the one that did anything wrong. Chris is the one who did something wrong. So, you know, that kind of made me feel better about things. You know, just, it's almost like juvenile, like logical, like, um, like negotiating with yourself. Just so, yeah, you know, I feel good now because, yeah, he reminded me that I'm not the bad person. Chris is the bad person. So although I just found out that those babies were submerged in crude oil tanks and like all this other stuff, you know, my day is brightening up quite a bit. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Yeah. By the way, I need you to do that, Kevin. And, you know, we can do this as a team, but just don't fucking let me down. Do this, do that, do this, do that for me, me, me. It's really just, it's like, it's like nauseating. These are the points where I was saying earlier, I felt sick as I was listening to this interview. We asked this question, 
Was there something you could have done to prevent this from happening? And although I didn't maybe ask it that way yesterday, your answer was, I didn't know this was going to happen. Um, so if you didn't know it was going to happen, he never made mention of this happening. Um, then what are you going to do to prevent it? Kessinger says, right. Kobach says, right. Kessinger says, understood. Uh, well, like I, well, I mean, but sometimes I still think about it. Like, did he just really like lose his shit that night? Or was he just so upset that he like, you know, decided to take out the whole family? I'm like, or was he like plotting this whole fucking thing? I don't know. I mean, okay now. So I noted unintelligible more stuff. So then another thing, so noted, unintelligible, that I think most of the most significant phone conversation that I had with him, two things. So one of the most significant phone conversations I had with him was that very first one on Monday night, because he, because that was the one where he talked about the sheets, and that was the one where that he was wishing, and that's when he talked about the blankets missing from the kid's room. And that was also the one where he talked about trying to freaking get her wedding ring appraised. Kobach says, right. Kessinger says, like all of that, like really creepy shit happened like in that, Kobach says, okay. Kessinger says, phone call. And that was when I really, really started getting scared. And you probably see that when we link okay, up those okay. texts, so listen, like, here's an important, here's an important take. There's a few important takeaways from this, this whole interview that I wanted to like wrap up nicely for you, but I'm like, just like losing my stamina here, but this is an important one right here. So she does this in several instances with several things that she's trying to cover up, but she realizes she screwed up because she said too much she lied and then she lied and lied and then she can't shut up so the lie got you like real big before she knew what cards law enforcement was in was in their hand right so in this instance the difference between the interview on the 16th the videotaped one with her dad and this one on the 17th the telephone one that's partially redacted is that on the 16th she did not think that law enforcement had any of her texts. So she's like, phew, I'm home free for now at least. And then I can deal with cleaning up my lies later because that's what pathological liars do. It's a series of cleaning up one lie after another, right? Um, so, you know, that's her MO among all the other things we can call her. She certainly is a pathological liar. That is without a doubt. Um, so, you know, she really screws up in talking about Monday night and, you know, how she felt as far as her suspicion about maybe Chris was involved or not, theoretically, and that she makes this huge, huge, huge point. She doubles down, triples down, quadruples, quadruples down, sex tuples down on the fact that she was not alerted to anything being amiss other than, you know, the pregnant wife and the babies are missing until Tuesday when she read the newspaper and found out that Shanann was pregnant and that Chris lied and he had never lied to her before like that. And it just hurt her. So it was the hurt that made her, um, made her delete his messages. And it was the lies that made her break her SIM card or whatever she said, you know, um, she, you know, had to put emphasis on making law enforcement believe that she did not know that Shanann was pregnant because if she knew, she would look like the dirty empanada. You hear there, Stevie? You hear that? The dirty, skanky empanada that she is. She would reveal herself that she was with a man who was married, where she knew she was a mistress, where she was trying to manipulate him out of the relationship. And she knew 
the wife was pregnant and there were two little kids involved. Like what a skanky ass empanada. And she doesn't want to be the skanky ass empanada. She wants to be the fiscally responsible, logical, rational, well-planned 401k stockholder that she tries to present herself to be to law enforcement. She's simply not. So the most important thing for her on Monday, well, on Tuesday was to make law enforcement believe she did not know Shanann was pregnant. And conveniently, that hooked right up with her excuse for deleting everything on her phone that had to do with Chris and, you know, taking the unprecedented move of trying to break your SIM card. <laughs> I still never have heard of that. And, um, you know, that was her story. That was a narrative. That was her, you know, that was her, her storyline and she was sticking to it, you know, come hell or high water. Well, high water rushed into hell when she found out during this interview in the beginning of the interview that law enforcement had the previous seven days of all of her text messages, seven days. So from August 17th back to seven days, oh man, that is a critical time. From August 10th to August 17th, law enforcement had those on lockdown either as of, you know, late Tuesday night, the 16th, or early um, Wednesday morning, the 17th. And then everything had to change. So then her story was, now she knows about, now law enforcement knows about the fury, the absolute flurry, furious flurry of phone calls and text messages and FaceTimes on Monday evening, late in the night from 8 p.m. until almost 3 in the morning, a total of three hours back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, just 12 hours after Chris Watts' family went missing and was murdered, taken off the face of this earth, and that's what's going on, and she totally lied about it, and now she's got to cover that up. So now she's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know how I told y'all that I wasn't alerted to anything until uh, no red flags until Tuesday morning when I read the newspaper and found out that his wife, that girl, Shanann with strangulation hands, was pregnant. And it was the hurt that made me do this. And it was the lies that made me do this. Well, you know, that's all true, of course because I'm fiscally responsible and rational and logical and all that. And I'm also fit. Do you want to talk about your macros? I can write them for you. I can get them dialed in, you know. Um, she has to change all of that to explain those away because those Monday night phone calls were critical. And you know what else happened during those Monday night phone calls? And I was hoping that I could segue into this during this live stream. And it took a lot longer than I anticipated. But we're going to go there next. Is that... In the, during those Monday night phone calls, there is the phone call, well, the several phone calls that Chris Watts missed from law enforcement when law enforcement was calling, remember, to get um, Bella and Cece's height and weight. And are there are any scars, marks, or tattoos on Shanae and Bella or Cece? And, you know, the uh, officer thought it was really weird that he couldn't get a hold of Chris. He wasn't able to get a hold of him on his um, personal phone. So he had to get a hold of him on his cell phone. And it just so happens, guys, that at the very same time and in the very same duration, Nicole Kessinger was on Chris Watts' other phone line with him as well. So Chris Watts was on two phones, two different lines at the same time, one in contact with law enforcement who was asking about his missing wife, pregnant wife and children and trying to get information from him to help so that he could help them find the family. And he's on another separate phone, separate line with his mistress. Um, so, you know, things get a little deeper there too, but, um, oh, there's so much, there's so much to tie together. Let's see. Um, that was discord. Oh, <laughs> oh wait, sorry. I'm trying to get down to current content comments here. Huh. 
I don't know. Okay, wait, hold it. It's a little sidetrack here. Atlas Aurora says to her librarian, there isn't but um, to tell Kelly, let's make a poll because we need a Discord chat for Watsy Obsession. Like, are you being serious? And I don't even know anything about Discord chat. I know that people talk about it all the time. Is that something you guys want? Just, I need help with that. <laughs> Somebody tell me how to do it and we consider it done. <laughs> Hi, Red Sassy Fox. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Okay, so let me get down to the current. Uh, oh, Discord danger. What? What? Oh, no, Angel. I don't do... Uh, oh, should we be doing Discord, Angel? I don't know. Somebody please help me out with Discord. Can someone send me an email at lossobsession.gmail.com and tell me... I, I just have no idea and I don't have enough time or energy to, in, to research Discord. Oh, no. Okay, I need to know how to do this. I need to know how to do this. All right, someone's got to help me with that. Who volunteers? Um, let's see. I like Cuddle I like Cuddle House too. Okay, so now I'm reading all your comments. I'm getting all. J for Justice has a cool Discord. Oh, how do I find it? All right, never mind. I lost my son. What is a Discord? I'm right with you there. Um, let me get on to current comments. Where are we? Oh, hey, thanks, Muck Boys. I'm your favorite. Oh, I'm honored because you're like a true crime aficionado. Thank you so much. Um, okay, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. Um, Um, yeah, I like CDT number two, by the way. Oh, <laughs> she probably has an occasion for a live that just she's watching, uh, crapping her like literally crapping her drawer. She was dirty, very dirty. I would love that. Hey, girl. What's up? Don't know your name. Um, oh, interesting. Um, so, let's see. I can't even see more. My contacts are all blurry. Let's see. K. Brown McPhil. Am I saying that right? I hope I am. Well, welcome. I think that she made that comment about, I'm not in trial. Chris is. And I didn't do anything wrong. Chris did. To get his reaction about it. Her, yeah, you know what? I think you're right, too. I think you're right, too. I don't. I know that doesn't sound like something that Mark, the investigator, would have said. It's just like too simpleton, right? No, I think you're, you know, I like realized that what I just said, but I didn't think of it in terms of how you just put it right now. And it, I, that rings really true to me. Good call. <laughs> oh yes, dirty empanada. That's my that's my um that's my little pet affectionate name for her. Yep. Actually, I have a playlist called Dirty Empanada. Hmm. Yeah. Good call, MK. Um, NK was Nicole Kessinger was covering for Chris Watts because she knew why he was cleaning. Very possible. I was thinking something like that too. But I also think she's also just so um, like, you know, tone deaf that she could see no problem that he spent the day cleaning instead of looking for his family, his girls and his pregnant wife. My God. Oh, if you do know how to make a server, if you figure that out, hook it up. You see how good I am with technology. My God, just watch the first half hour of this live stream. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, I don't want to talk about my macros. No, no more. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, Chris Watts called her the sexy empanada, which makes me gag. So I changed it to the dirty empanada or preferably the stanky empanada. It was a lie. It was a man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ashley Victoria says, um, DA decided what was made public. So really, he's who was 
has underestimated the amount of people that I guess as junior detectives oops, were more observant than him and also more honest. And yeah, a little smarter too, maybe. The DA, unless he just looked the other way. Hmm. Yep. Uh, Turquoise says she wanted she wanted the police to not know she was about the insurance policy. And she wanted police to think that SW was all about the money, but not her. You know what? That's very interesting. I'm having a thought I have not had yet. And I don't know if there's anything to it, but I'm just going to think out loud. This is just my brain late at night, early in the morning, not working very well, speculating probably poorly. So we all know that NK asked Chris Watts, you know, I asked him, like, do you have a 401k? And he was like, yeah. Do you have a 401k? And he was like, yeah. Do you have a 401k? I put that repeat one of my videos. And uh, so, I mean, that conversation really, I mean, could turn into, you know, all of the financial arrange arrangements you're set up with. And in Darko, they work for the same company. Oh, isn't it? Well, no, actually, they don't. He works for Darko. She works for somewhere else. But hey, you know, you really should, NK, you know, um, try to find a job with, with and Darko, not through a contractor, because, oh, my God, the benefits are really awesome here. Yeah, I have a 401k. And I also have, and this is something I did research about, and I understand about their life insurance policy. And I want all of you to understand, because a lot of people make it sound as though, the life insurance policies. Yes, there was a life insurance policy on Chris Wet Watts. Shanann was the beneficiary. There was a life insurance policy on Shanann Watts. Chris was the beneficiary. And there were, in fact, even life insurance policies on Bella and Celeste. And the parents, of course, were beneficiaries with survivors, with survivorship, right? Um, a lot of people make it sound like they went and sought out those policies or they paid extra to get those policies but that is not the case and i've talked about this before when i was looking into that possibility i interviewed two different hr corporate hr people and i just did some like you know normal research too and uh like especially in a large corporation that has a lot of exposure and a lot of liability due to the nature of their business runnings like uh hmm, on gas and oil company they things like that are not like fringe benefits. They're not like fluff. They're not like, you know, the bells and whistles that might cause you to take, accept this job offer over another one, but rather they are mandated by human resource per the, you know, the legal office of either, you know, you know, liabilities or compliance or something like that. Right. So, and in Darko, you know, if you're if you're a full time employee, kind of at his level of employment, those life insurance policies for everyone in your immediate family are standard. In fact, to not have them, you have to specifically reject them, and it is frowned upon. They try to talk you out of it, and there's I don't know, there's all these waivers and stuff you have to go through. It's so these insurance policies that were for every everybody family had insurance policy it's not because somebody was scheming towards killing the family and cashing in on it they are just standard in the corporate world right now definitely in anadarko and specifically you know in in this situation does that make sense yeah okay The key to Discord is linking it to YouTube. Shit, who's going to help me with this? Do I have a volunteer yet? No, I have to do it. <laughs> Rewatching. Skip the first 20 minutes. It was just a technical nightmare. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Alice Aurora. Oh, God, Angel D. I can't even pin that comment. I think I just threw up. I did throw up. That's like, oh, yeah. Some things you can't unsee, Angel D. <gasps> oh. Okay, volunteers for helping me with Discord. Volunteers, volunteers, volunteers. I tried to go into Discord of a creator. I can't figure out. 
me try to get to I'm like, trying to get down to come. Let's see. Discord is hard. Oh, all right, catch check. I saw you're trying to get my attention. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I've got my hands full as it is, I guess. That's why one of you guys is gonna help me. Leave Jim alone. I know, Bonnie. Leave Jim alone, guys. Come on. Wait, am I reading this right? MK says, L yes, Kelly, law enforcement has let murderers walk free if they'll tell them where the bodies are. Oh, yeah, that is absolutely right. Yeah, it's that important to the families. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, thank you, muck boys. Oh, you don't get any, any more trouble with the hubby. Who says that? I can't get to go up a little bit. Oops, Angel D. Yeah, don't get any more trouble. NK is watching. I hope she is. NK, could you give me a call? I will. I'll, I'll give my phone number right here for everyone. I'll dox myself if I can have a conversation with you. Awesome, Cat Chick. Thanks for being here. It's great seeing you. Mm -hmm. Oh, you heard me say empty nada, and that's also correct. Okay, huh? Okay, thank you. I I thought that's how I learned it, but. Mm. Good night. Good night for everyone who signed off. We're going to be not too much longer. Wow, this has been really long, but it's been great. Um, great chatting with you guys. Okay. Um, I should only visit once and then. Uh huh. Okay. All right. I'm just going to finish this interview. There's only a couple minutes left. All right. There's like, let's see. Do for there's six minutes left. Kobach says, okay. Kessinger says, I thought so I sort of think I think almost every it was probably every other text I was saying to him, just I'm really scared. I'm really scared. Kobach says, right. Kessinger says, and I think that was when I was just like, okay, I'm creeped out. And then like Tuesday, nothing gotten better. And then I found out he was lying to me. And I already kind of creeped out from the night before. And I was like, okay, you know, and, and I didn't even realize it until you guys were like, try to just think back on some of that. And then last night I was just like thinking about all of those phone conversations that we had on Monday night. And I'm like, you know what? Those were really uncomfortable. In fact, they were so uncomfortable. I ended that Skype, Skype conversation because Kobach says, right. Kessinger says, it made me so uncomfortable. Kobach says, okay, well, ha ha hand tight. Let me go make some phone calls and try to get th things in order for uh, somebody to call you. And again, write down any thoughts that you have that are relative. The information you provided today is um, very was very important. And I thank you for reaching out and providing it to me. Kessinger says, okay. Kobach says, okay. Kessinger says, um, I will do that. Can I call you back pretty soon though? Cause I really, Kobach says, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to jump on. Kessinger says, need to get on a roll. Roll with this like Anandarko thing. Kobach says, yep. I'm going to walk out of the office and I'm in right now and go talk to the people who handle that, uh, and see if we can get somebody in touch with you sooner rather than later. Kessinger says, thank you. Kobach says, all right. Kessinger says, should I wait, 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 should I wait to talk to my boss before I talk to them or noted as unintelligible? Kobach says, I, you might want to talk to them first. Um, you know, it's a decision that you need to make, but it, I think they're going to be more interested in your personal health. And that certainly involves, revolves into your personal and professional life. So you might just give them a minute to talk to you and then you can, that might help you make a decision on what you want to do. Kessinger says, I think that sounds great. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Um, I know I have five things I wanted to say to you and I can only remember like four of them. So I might text or call you. 
Kobach says, perfect. Kessinger says, or something later and let you know. Kobach says, would. Kessinger says, if I think of something. Kobach says, yep. Kessinger says, but I think I'm going, I got the big ones out of the way on that. Kobach says, okay, it's the, it's best to text me uh, because um, I didn't mention this is the beginning, but you probably know anytime we talk, I record it, especially regarding the information that we are just discussed. So if you text me and then I can move into a quiet area so I can run a recorder. Um, that way, both what you say to me is, you know, I don't misrepresent what you say. Uh, it's it's coming out of your mouth, and that's why it's recorded, okay? Kessinger said, is this going to be one of those things where if it goes to trial, they'll ask, like, hold me accountable for every single little itty-bitty word? Because sometimes, Kobach says, I, I told you. I told you last night. Just remember, um, Kessinger says, I don't remember the exact words. Kobach says, yo, you'll... Be, you'll be, if it does go to trial, there'd be some prep, but again, you just tell the truth as you remember it. And that's all you have to do. And nobody expects in a, you know, three months, six months, nine months, five years, whatever it might be to remember exactly what somebody told me, uh, in that span of time ago. So you'll be, don't worry about that right now. We'll come, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. If it ever gets there. Okay. Kessinger says, sounds good. Kobach says, all right, take care. And I'll, uh, either I, I will call you and give you the name of the person who's going to reach out to you. Kessinger says, can you do that? Cause I have like, at this point forward, Mark was just like, if you don't know if media is going to call or anybody, he's Kobach says, yup. Kessinger says like, I'd make people leave a voicemail and Kobach says, sure. Kessinger says, just don't answer them. Noted as unintelligible. Kobach says, I will give you, I will call you and tell you their names, their phone number, and they're calling from, so you'll be confident in who they are. Kessinger says, thank you. Kobach says, all right, Nikki, thanks. Nicole says, have a good one. Kobach says, you too, bye-bye. Kessinger says, bye. Kobach says, this is 1141. I'm going to stop the recording. Note, the transcript has been reviewed with the audio recording submitted, and it is an accurate transcription. Signed, Agent Kevin Kobach, 090718, with a signature. Oh, my God. Welcome, or welcome no, back. To no, no welcome. No more welcoming. This <laughs> is the second. Oh, okay. Um, hi, uh, oh, the Wokey. I always have to think about how I say your name. Yeah, we're, this is still going. Can you even believe it? We are off to a little bit of a rough start, but we just finally wrapped up that interview and went off on a thousand different tangents, but that's sometimes what we do. Um, yeah, so we can do another explosion theory. We can talk about another explosion theory, like in a live stream. I just want to, you know, I just, you know, I, I, I'm not sold on the explosion theory. I think like, you know, it may have run through the minds of certain people, but I don't think it was personally, I mean, I could be wrong on this one, been wrong before I'll be wrong again. And on this one, I could be wrong. So I just don't really have a firm opinion either way, other than the fact that I don't feel like there's been anything too concrete that has indicated to me that the explosion theory was real. Of course, that may have been a passing thought, an idea an evil, you know, an evil, like, flicker in the mind of any of these evil people. Um, but I don't think it was put into action. Um, but that's just me. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so do that. Wait, let me take this down. We're in my studio, and I don't know what you can see there. Okay. Man, I'm tired, guys. Oh, and the bunny's getting rested. You can hear, you're going to start hearing them. It was a lot. I got two cards in one day, and it was so overwhelming for me, and... My only crime in all of this is that I didn't tell him to back off sooner because 
I'm financially responsible, emotionally stable, and rational. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> She's none of those. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let's see here. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Oh. Okay, wait one second. I'm almost there. Okay, so since we just listened to that whole interview, this is the these are the texts immediately following that interview. And then I go to bed. The text between Kobach and Kessinger. Between Kessinger and Kobach via text message continues on that same day, August 17th, 2018. Kobach then says, Nikki, call me about the victim advocate. Hazel Heckers is her name. Phone will show on her caller ID is a certain number, but her direct number is a different number. Friday, August 17th. 2.59 p.m. Kessinger says, can I ask, how were you able to acquire my texts between Charlotte and I? Yeah. Okay. So th that was, Go back you responds know, by saying, we that's her first message to him after this interview, because that was a big bomb he dropped on her house um, during that interview that he had the past seven days of their, of her text messages. And she was like, oh shit, I need to totally revamp my story. Now, all of that craziness I told them about not thinking anything was amiss until I found out that Shanann was pregnant on Tuesday morning when I read a newspaper. Um, yeah. How do I, like, walk back that? Well, we just saw her try. We have all your texts for the past seven days. <laughs> now, this is an important point here because I think this also bolsters what I believe to be true, that the only conversation that Kessinger had with her bestie, Charlotte, about Chris Watts was on August 8th, 2018, the day before oh, Shanann, man. Bella Celeste, and baby Nico were murdered. Isn't that strange? They had been dating for six weeks, according to them, and she doesn't message, mention to her best friend about her new love interest until the day before the murder of his family. Very, very strange indeed. Thank you for the info. Why did I sign that paperwork if you guys already had the information? Not upset by any means, just confused. Do you guys get all of my text messages going forward as well? Colbeck says, again, the phone could contain other texts that were not captured by the cell phone company. No, we do not get your texts. Kessinger then says, understood. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Quebec says, you too. So now on Saturday, August okay. 18th so at 3.45 p.m., oh, once again, it's God. Kessinger so that initiates you see how, the you know, that those, those texts, that have you got, who, has anyone seen all of those texts? Like, I'm, I'm not, there's a few that have been kind of widely dispersed, but I mean, the to I don't know if you watched the video early, I guess you'd have to watch the video to know what they all were. Has anyone seen all of those? I'm just interested to know. Um, when you put those texts together as sort of the, you know, the backdrop of those five different interviews happening um, and how we see Kessinger's story change, some things that maybe we didn't understand, and then, you know, what's really going on. And it's like, I look at it like this. It's what really is going on in her mind. We can get a glimpse of through her text because she just can't help herself. She just can't help herself to text Colbeck all the time, to text him in the middle of the night at two in the morning, to text him for no stupid reason, to text him and say extremely stupid and selfish and inappropriate things. She just can't help herself. So reading those texts is like a glimpse into her screwed up mind and then what it said in the interviews is, you know, we see how she she wants to 
present herself to give a certain image to law enforcement. And that's the image that she believes will protect her from consequence, from humiliation, from discomfort, from, you know, and she's very like a very fragile little soul. She just needs to be like, you know, pampered and lifted up and complimented and, and, and she will do anything to get that, which sustains her, which is basically attention. Um, it's just all so very, I, I don't know. I don't know. She is. She's, I don't know. She needs to go. She needs to be investigated. That's what we need. That would solve everything. That would solve everything for me. I think it would solve everything for a lot of you. If she was investigated, then, you know, if it was a proper investigation, then, you know, the DA won't be Rourke, obviously. Thank God. Um, law enforcement, whoever it is, if they find that she was not involved after a true investigation, they can stand tall and proud and they can make a statement that is consistent with reality, that is consistent with other statements they have made, that makes sense, that isn't, you know, demeaning and degrading to the public as a whole, who, by the way, they work for as public servants in elected offices, work, um, you know, and they can tell us that. They can make a statement about it. They can make a statement of guilt or innocence, of suspicion or not. They can state the facts that support that position. And then us junior detectives aren't going to have anything to chew on. It's like done, 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 done. You know, get it out there. It's done. Everyone moves on. But their failure to do the right thing on all levels has created this like cluster F some people call Watts Island, some people call, you know, get a life, some people call obsessed, <laughs> you know, with this case. It's really a cultural phenomenon, but they, they need to do the right thing and properly investigate her. That is the official stance of this channel. Um, I know, I know. Walker Renee says, I can't believe that she wanted to go back to Andarco. Every person would have known then what happened. Why did she think she would have been welcomed back by everyone? I know, right? Yeah. Oh, good. You're in the right place, Kathleen, says I'm obsessed. Us too. <laughs> oh, Turquoise, I know. I know. We're junior detectives. Everyone gets your junior detective badge. Man, oh. Ontario at Orion, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in quite a while. Great to see you. <laughs> Princess Layla wore a brown bikini better. Oh, yeah. She told Charlotte everything intimate about Chris Watts, so Charlotte must know more, but she only told Charlotte about him the day before the murders, and she probably does know more. I think you're right about that. Yeah. Hey, welcome. I think that you said you followed um, Zawoki over here. So awesome. Thank you. Welcome. So happy you subscribed and happy you're here. <laughs> you give me these great compliments. Love it when you're live. You're like a genius with a sense of humor. A rare beat. Well, thank you. You are too kind. You should see those compliments for NK that could sustain her for life. <laughs> Thank you, though. I appreciate you, Angel D. <laughs> uh. Yeah, she says, I don't want them to poke holes in my story. That's right. Yep, yep, because there's lots of holes to poke, and she knows that. Poker, poker. Gosh, crazy, crazy, crazy woman. I'm proud to be a junior detective. Yes, me too. 
Um, if I keep getting comments, I want to pin here. Oh, I'd love to go to Crime Con. Okay, I'm just reading your comments, but I'm going to wrap up because, like, it's, like, stupid late. Oh, my God, four hours. That's crazy. Thank you guys for being here and for contributing to the conversation. You guys are so awesome. I love y'all. Yeah. D.A. Rourke has his head shoved up his own backside. His ego is, yeah, I agree on that one. I agree on that one, yeah. Oh, hey, thanks, Miss Matt. Nice to see you. The DA doesn't even know the color of the girl's hair. I know. that. Oh, God, that was, like, just so hard to listen to. I was just going to launch off into everything that was so upsetting about that podcast. But I was like, oh, no, that's going to be a whole other thing to start up. But, yeah, that, that was really gross. And the way he talked about, you know, like, he did this valiant thing by eventually looking at the crime scene photos. My God, he is the district attorney. Attorney. And in order to, and that's, that's something that I talked to my friend Alex about um, just recently. I haven't talked to him or I haven't talked talk to you guys about his impression of any, specifically of anything in the case. Um, for those of you who don't know, my friend Alex is a defense attorney. He's very accomplished and he's very smart. And he, I, I refer to him and well, him and my, 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 my beloved dearly departed dad is the Watsy consultant or the Watsy obsession legal consultant team. Um, but I did talk to my friend Alex about that, Do you, and he listened to it. DA work, you know, not he wasn't going to look at the crime scene photos. He said, "I've seen enough dead bodies in my day. I don't need to see a dead child." And he was just disgusted. How dare he even consider prosecuting a case where he hasn't gotten? He hasn't gone into the like. He said something like, "Hasn't even you know been in the lion's den of the crime or something like that." Like, you know, basically not even understanding how horrific the crime is. You know, his position was, because I couldn't quote possibly quote him because he said something very prolific, um, you know, basically was that if you don't understand the true nature of the crime and, you know, sadly, you know, part of the job is to, you know, witness the horror, to, you know, see the sights, to smell the smells, to be there, to get as close as you can to experiencing the terror, then you have absolutely no right to defend or prosecute a crime. And, you know, that, you know, I was thinking something like that, not even close to the way he put it. But ever since he and I had that conversation, I guess it was like a couple weeks ago, I think about I, the words just really stuck with me. And I just, you know, I, I feel there was so much truth in what he said. And I was just really disgusted by the way that D.A. Roar talked about not wanting to see the crime. Nope. I wasn't there. Wasn't there. Didn't need to go there. Nope. I just felt like I didn't need to do it. I just knew it was going to be bad for me. It's like, he's like a little bit of NK. Me, 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 me. Not, you know, I'm in this public elected office to serve my community and to serve justice for those who no longer have a voice and to provide the peace of mind and sanity that knowing justice has been served and fought for on behalf of your loved ones to so the family members, I, that's like all second to me being a little worried if I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night and I and need my blankie and pee my pants because I'm a little scared of what I saw. Like, I just thought that what he said in the podcast so many times just made him sound like a pathetic, like incapable like wrongly placed in life child. And I just am more disgusted by him than ever. That's right. DA Rourke. I know you're watching. It is a little weird that none of her friends have come forward. Yeah. Hmm. 
<laughs> oh, Mary, how are you, sweetheart? It's great to see you. <laughs> Yeah, long blonde hair, I know. I know. Oh, of course, that's always wonderful to see you. He will vacate that office. You know, he ran in 2020, he ran unopposed. So that is why he is in office now. So, well, hey, it is 2024, last time I checked, which means elections are coming up in November. He has one available term left to not, I was going to say serve that community, but he's not serving him to screw that community. Um, and I don't know. I mean, how active can we get in speaking out against, I mean, so I'm in New York. This is a Colorado thing. How active can we get in speaking out against his, him serving another term? Because I feel rather strongly about it. Don't know about you. Why do you keep telling me to go to bed, Muck Boys? I know, I'm tired. <laughs> I know, he consults, I know, it's just also disgusting. Okay, so I am going to take um, Muck Boys' advice, and I am going to go to bed because I am completely freaking exhausted. And so in closing, I am just going to play you the new little NK um, lies, lies and shade quotes intro that I put together for you earlier today. And it's only two minutes long. And then I'm going to say bye. But I would like you to please remember to lock your windows and your doors. I want you guys to be safe. And life is hard. So please be good to other people. Be kind to other people. And most of all, please, please, please be good to yourself because I know you deserve it. And I know you're not good to yourself as much as you should be. I know it. I'm sure of it. And and so just remember that. And then because you guys did. So I have another Watts upload coming pretty soon. Probably first. Mick J is going to be the um, Idaho 4 upload that is going to be a follow up to the um, have we even seen the probable cause research that I did. Um, I think it's super interesting. Um, I hope to have it out in the next few days. And Zawoki is going to be here for a live stream next week, unless I talk to him and find out that it's going to be infringing on. I think he has some vacation time, long weekend or something next week. I don't want to do that. But so right now, I think we're planning on next Friday. So excited for that. I know you guys will definitely be here for that. And um, there's going to be a members live stream on Thursday evening. Yeah. And we have so many members now. And again, thank you, Zawoki, for gifting those memberships and the other people who became members. Um and just super chats and super stickers. I really appreciate you guys. And thank you for supporting the channel. You're awesome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's me. I miss your face. I was just calling to say hi. Thank you so much for coming. Oh my God. One more thing I have to say. Oh wait, the, I'm sorry. I started. The person's not here anymore, so I'm not going to bother. I'll say it next time. It's about Chris Watts IQ. I actually administer IQ tests and he, the acute IQ he states that he has, he definitely doesn't have, but sorry. I thought it was live chat with something I started. I'm having a wonderful time. You mean a lot to me and I'm glad that you're having a blast. I am so out of breath. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm really trying to help you guys. I just, I need you guys to help me too. Like, yes, man. this is a team, but just don't. <laughs> so, the, down, the reason I, why, um, like, I do, I think, uh, I think about this yesterday that I would like to sit down with you once we um, have your text messages and the phone calls and we can put them in a, in a uh, some type of, easily looking that we can sit down and look at them and compare them and we can kind of get the context of how everything was going that night. I would like to do that with you, unfortunately. So the download that we got yesterday is going to take uh, multiple days to be analyzed. I probably won't have it back till next week. And then because you guys did have so many um, text messages, uh, there is one of my analysts is working on getting those in order. 
so we can put something together where we can actually sit down and discuss it. But I do think that's something that we would, I want to do in the near future, sometime probably next week. I mean, I can do that. I don't mind giving you guys my time. I just need you guys to like help me with my employer and try to just help me brace for this media thing. I, I'm with you. We definitely need to accelerate the case because the more law, the more it takes, the less sure that they are of situation. He murdered her. She's out of the picture. You're never going to know if she was pregnant. If he can get away with murder, you're not going to. I got divorced from my wife. You said, do you understand what I'm saying here? If if she's gone. But this, don't leave. Hypothetically. Please. Don't hypothetically. Leave if she, okay. you understand where I'm going. If right, you didn't you're, know. You're leading into right. questions that are nothing with your. If you didn't know, though. Wait, Nick. That she was there. Did you hear what I said? I'm not, I'm following. You. Stop asking about it. She didn't have anything to do with it. She wasn't there that morning. She voluntarily cooperated with law enforcement. She provided us all the information. I'm not going to tell you where she's at. Stop. Leave me alone. Okay. I get, oh, I was just going to say it was really foul. I'm glad I didn't say it. Um, okay, so I just one, you know, one more thing. All right, because this the live stream started with people talking about this and it's ending but with people talking about this. So I just I, I I very much believe that those recordings of the giggling is Nicole Kessinger. Um Private Eye says, I miss your face, and I was just calling to say hi or two different calls merged together, different people. Many people say that, that that's Nicole Atkinson because she says, I miss your face. I know so many people would say I miss your face. As I don't know. It's just something that I know a lot of women girls say. Um, and I, I just, I just, guys, I just don't, I just don't think that's the case. Um, I do want to remind y'all that in the discovery, in the discovery, you know, well, well, I don't need to say anything more about it. But in the discovery, what I'm going to say is. Here we have, I don't know what date it is. I'm not going to look because I'm too tired, but somewhere in the discovery timeline, you know, it says Shanann Watts called and held a 23 minute conversation. And then, oh, it, well, Chris Watts was Googling the topics. When to say I love you. When to say I love you for the first time in a new relationship. What do you feel when someone tells you they love you? Because he has no emotion, remember? How does it feel when someone says, I love you, right? <laughs> I mean, seriously, he has to Google his emotions. And then Shanann calls Watts and they talk for 23 minutes. And then the note is, during that conversation, Kessinger called Watts and left a voicemail following, following an eerily dis disconcerting childlike giggle. She told Watts, I miss your face. I was just calling to say hi. Call me back. Bye. Okay. So I'm sure that if that's in the discovery like that, that was one message. They confirmed it was from Nicole Kessinger's number. Yes, her voice inflection had a crazy range and intonation change in that one short voice message. But <laughs> the eerily disconcerting childlike giggles. <laughs> I, I miss your face. I was just calling to say hi. Call me back. Bye. You know, like that's just how it went. And she does that. She does that in interviews and things like that. So I feel really confident that that is, in fact, Nicole Kessinger and not Nicole Atkinson or the Easter Bunny. Just wanted to say. Yeah. I miss your fake glamorous girl. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh boy. Oh. Yeah, I know. The closet, the, the giggle in the closet, sound, I know, sounds a lot like that. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's not NK, I know. Or NA, I mean, I'm sorry, it's not NA. NA is just a good friend. I mean, I, I'm i just going to be honest. I just, I, I, I really don't like when people try to pin, like, you know, like malicious things or like, you know, that any, like terrible things on NA. I just think that that's so misplaced and ill-informed. I'm sorry. I know some people just got offended by that, but. That's how I feel about it. I mean, I feel like if I'm going to be talking about this case and I want to, you know, present myself as being someone who presents the facts, I need to, you know, stand up for the people who who truly don't deserve to be like dogged like she's she's been. Yeah, you can hear in the interview. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, well, let's see. Let's see. Kitty hates crap. <laughs> Chris was on the spectrum. I, I, I've always thought that he, he, he likely is, but um, I don't know. And I cannot diagnose that. He had to Google emotions. Yes, exactly. Correct. But it could be more than spectrum stuff, but it could be, could be that too. Um, he had to use song lyrics to express his feelings. I think a lot of people do that though, kind of, but MK interpreted it as cheese sliding off his cracker. Well, I think what she interpreted as cheese sliding off his cracker was the fact that he killed his pregnant wife and two living daughters. But I mean, you know, um, you know, I think that you're you know, spot on saying like that you know, identifying that he had to Google the emotions and things like that. How does it feel when someone says, I love you? That's definitely indicates something right on. And I was diagnosed with cancer. She's gone through cancer. Um, I mean, I know that you're not in remission until five years after you test a certain way. Um, she's gone through the treatment. I, last I knew she was in, you know, it was a while ago that she actually went through active chemo and, and um, she's, she's doing better. I hope that's the case. I hope that's the case. She deserves a wonderful life. Yeah. so all right guys well thank you so much for being here thank you subscribers thank you members lots of new members and welcome there's gonna be a members only live stream on thursday night remember hopefully you'll get the notification um and thank you all if you're new here welcome i'm so happy you're here and i hope everyone has an awesome night and i'm just gonna have to hit end stream or it's never gonna happen but i hope to see y'all soon